everybody. It's episode 10. I was about to say, dude. Yeah, Welcome to episode 10. Double, double digits, digits, bro. Uh, we won't last another two episodes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Police on our ass already. <laughs> I hear all those, the echoes. They listening, man. They listening. Nah, but uh, welcome to episode 10. This is Matt. What's up, y'all? What's up, Aaron? What's up, Matt? What's going on, Matt? I'm Aaron. What's going on, Aaron? <laughs> so, As you can see, the mood is trying bit. to get lightened today. You know, we're trying to ease up off some of our uh, deeper third world, third dimensional ideas that we're fucking with all the time on here and the I'm simulations. Sure we'll get to it, though, you know. Yeah, yeah. It'll it'll probably come up again. You know how it goes. We'll go young Pharaoh in about 20 minutes, but oh, I wanted to start this shit off because we brought it up. Uh, just kind of go into a deep dive into some questionable shit that used to be on TV, just to compare to what is now on TV and how saccharine and like watered down shit is. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like TV might have got worse, though, to no, an extent. like, I'm talking, the, like, I guess kind of, like, with violence, but... Right, like, that's what I'm saying, yeah. With that booty? No, that's a different subject, which leads me to what could only be... I, to me, it's the best video that ever came out of BET Uncut. I mean, there might be people to debate that, but... Um, I mean... Uh, I mean, it probably was the top video. Only one better than that was a uh, tip drill, uncut tip drill video. But yeah. even that ain't fucking. That ain't this, bro. Well, I yeah, mean, this is the... what I like about this is not only we didn't have like internet like we do now. So word right. of mouth was basically how shit got viral. And when I saw this with my buddies in college, I thought, oh my god, like we're the only people in the world that know about this shit. But you grew up where you grew up. I grew up in Ohio. We both were well aware of this infamous <laughs> video. And for everybody, we're gonna share parts of this. That I mean, most of it's pornographic. I don't know how much we could. I was have about to say it. you might get the title card up, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for those that don't know, there used to be a, a little show on BT on, called BT Uncut. Uh, it actually was music, so that was, that's a crazy thing. They actually showed music videos, but these mm -hmm. music videos just went a little bit extra. Well, the interesting thing first about BET Uncut is I think it's the only video show that premiered with no host. If you're paying attention, they literally would just show oh, videos. Yeah, you're right. Because usually, yeah. Yeah, usually it would be somebody being like, all right, and next up we're going to play this, this, and this. Like, they had no guy like that. It literally was just, like, commercials and then, with no warning, back to some raunchy shit. Because the thing about the uncut video was that it wasn't oh. that it was, like, director's uncut. It was that it was all, you know, nudity, booty, as borderline porn as you could get without showing nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but like, also, this is which is don't know. I mean, if you watch this video... I mean, they might not be showing you, like, <laughs> the actual part of the body, but they're doing things in the video where it's like, I mean, you just, I mean, it might be I mean, assault. I don't know. I don't know how in the women were involved. But, uh, I'm pretty sure that one guy is just straight up, like, doing kind of lingus. Uh, keep it, you know. <laughs> keep PG-13. They're straight kind of lingus in the what that thing smell like video because this is the video we talk we talk about what that thing smell like anybody yeah. that know uncut it wasn't just that you saw bet uncut because you might see like oh you know like a old regulators video on there or something but then it would just literally be the premiere it was like prime hour of it like i guess like right before it would go off what that thing smell like will come on oh my god like, jesus and first off i just want to say it's actually a pretty good song dog. i mean I remember the like, words to it decade, like a decade plus after I saw this. Two decades, for God's sake. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, it, it wasn't a terrible song, you know what I mean? 
Um, we'll play we'll play a little couple of clips for people that need to just you know get some of the audio for them. And the free tonight, what that just want to know that thing I'm smell like. I'm trying to kick it tonight. Oh, <laughs> so baby, tell me what that thing smell Come on, girl, bring it on here. I'm trying it's to good. kick it tonight. <laughs> so baby, tell me what that thing Backseat of a Volvo, make it shake, make it jump, make it twerk up and down just cause a young player said so. Basically, what the face smell like is what I'm asking. Why the music blasting through the background? See the bling from the wrist, plus the game in your ear, got you ready to bounce right now. My hold on. But honestly, I mean, I've heard way worse rap songs from way better artists. You know what I'm saying? So, oh. like, I, I respect these dudes. Plus, a little they bit. got Sweet. that nice little, like, that little R and B flavor to it. It's not just some guy <laughs> rapping about pussy. We've all heard that. This is that right. like Jamie Foxx digital love type shit where it's like you're supposed to smash to this, or I mean, you could probably just oh, this is like a porno. <laughs> you're smashing to this. I was you're about to say what type, of, what type of woman? woman. <laughs> what type of woman is letting you hit to that? I mean, <laughs> oh God. The, your next I mean, wife, bro. Your next honestly, wife. man, uh, that was kind of one of my problems. Uh, just back in the day of like the club life, you know, because like we were raised in that era. Like nowadays, kids don't really know about club activity too much. But to explain to the younger audiences, it used to be that uh, when you would go out, even at like school dances, like girls would just shake their ass. You know what I'm saying? Like it wouldn't be like all this like Instagramming in the corner and stuff. Like they would just be dancing hard as hell. And if you was a dude. You would, you know, ride up behind them, not really sneak. I mean, I don't want to say sneak up, but you would just, like, walk up behind them and, like, kind of, you know, stick your pelvis out there and they'd dance on you. But you had to pass the good look test because they'd look back first and be like, is he cute, is he ugly? And if, wow. if you got the go, then she will just dance with you all night <clears throat> without even knowing her name. You know what I'm saying? Like, you would never even know this chick because it was just dancing. It wasn't like he was trying to hit, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't trying to get no numbers or nothing. It was just we dancing and then... Then the song will go off, and then you go to another girl and dance with her. You know what I mean? So, damn, bro. During this, what kind of club experience did you have, bro? Oh, are you crazy, bro? Girl, you woman, see the woman. Bro, you want to know what's even wilder about that? This was in sixth, seventh, eighth grade. We used to have school dances in sixth, seventh, eighth grade after school, where you could just not take the bus home, and it would be a, another bus to take you home at night. You had to get a permission slip to stay after school to go to the dance, but everybody yeah. would get it. And then literally for free, our school would have a DJ come and we would just turn the whole cafeteria out, dog. Like all the lights would be off. Like dudes would what be like the in the fuck? corner. Chicks doing handstands on walls. We can get up on the road and bring your home girl to the I'm talking about where like, I, I fingered my first chicken one of these, bro. Like yeah, all that. Guys, yeah, I, I yeah. did not experience this. I did not yeah, experience bro. this. Huntington Middle School, shout out y'all the real ones. <laughs> oh, raising the, the generation. Fuck, raising the generation of just mm. straight up kings and queens. <laughs> Were you guys listening to this song while at this fucking... Uh, I mean, it was no edited music. There was definitely all of the, like... During that time, it was like... Mom Mob Deep Jordan was hot. Oh, you guys were listening um, to Mob Deep at a fucking school function, bro? Well, like it was like the 50 Cent era. Because you know like how he yeah. signed Mob Deep in them, you know what I'm saying? So it was like they had a song out. I remember everybody was doing this too. And then we had like a bunch of Jamaican songs they would play, like... Past the Dutchie upon the left hand side. God damn, um, you guys were getting fucking lit at school. Dude. We played, bro. They they would play Pony. You know what I'm saying? Genuine I mean, was popping during that era, like all that that's shit. Just dog, like, like, you had to have that at a school dance if that bro. thing get brought out. Oh, oh, even I'm at a white, about, like even at a white high school like I went to, Pony came out. Shit. Peaches and cream, you know what I'm saying? Like all of the all of the songs. <laughs> I forgot that, about peaches and cream, bro. I'm telling you, bro. Peaches like and and I was um when little Bow Wow was hot, so like all of his little jams, the girls would be going crazy for it, and then you could just get the oh my god, you get the ultimate dance when little Bow Wow came on. That's why I honestly never hated on that dude. Cause I'd be like, hey man, you get the girls in the proper state of mind for me to do what I do. I come in behind that and be like, so I ain't little Bow Wow, but. I'm me. <laughs> so you guys were just listening to like Chingy 
twerking. Right, right. <laughs> all that. All that, bro. Like, and what's Dude, crazy it, is almost every song back then had a dance, or if it didn't have a dance, then like I said, you would just be like riding up on booties and stuff. Like, but literally, dude, like Jay Kwan. I've, I've literally I've danced with every girl in in all my classes, like from sixth to eighth grade. Dude, up, I like, didn't have that experience. I was a fat nerd was in fucking school. So like my pussy getting came like near the end of high school and after. I, there was not a lot of <laughs> titty pussy. I, like Matt wasn't in the club twerking or in the cafeteria. I mean, we weren't. We weren't like up fucking, with some ass. You know what I'm saying. So I'm sure some people were. I wasn't that cool to be, you know, smashing or nothing at that age. But we was we was on the way to, to it. You know what I'm saying? I Those mean, I'm not saying was I wasn't educated around. or that I wouldn't right. have to be put into that situation. But I just didn't have oh, the, man. you know, I didn't have the balls at that point just man, to be God. like, let me just step in on that real quick. You have no idea. Like anybody that knows me and knows about these dances that I'm talking about, like legitimately, our middle school dances was more lit than our high school dances, dog. Like our middle school dance was more popping at homecoming because it was no excuse. Like you weren't in your like nice gowns and shit. Like you would just show up like in the clothes you wore to school that day and you already went to school. And it's just like, oh, we finna turn up, bro. And they would just like, the school would sell like, you know, snacks and pizzas and shit. And they would make money doing that. So that's why they would always have to dance. I think we had one like, one area like two or three months, you know what I'm saying? So, bro, turn up central, dog. These kids have no idea. We was club ready when we got to college, bro. <laughs> I mean, that's edu- see, that's real education. We talked about that last episode too, and I mean, oh, you yeah. got educated. I, I, I had to like fumble my way through a lot of, especially if I wanted to date, uh, like a black chick. Which oh, God, I did want to do that, and I just didn't have the balls. But when, as a white man. I feel like if I did what you just explained in that situation, like just get up behind and just put my little thing out there real quick. <laughs> she says she'd look back and just at, at high school age me and be like, Yes, I do, but not with you. <laughs> oh, hell, you know, I probably I don't get know, you man. in the back. I don't know. Now, you might have got mean, some love. Oh, you I probably got some would. love being fat. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Either. They would have, well, my school was like predominantly black, anyways, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, like, I would have been like, that would have been like, oh, look at this. It would have been a novelty. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They would have been like, oh, the white boy want to get a ride? And they probably would have showed you some <laughs> love, you know what I'm saying? And like, you probably would have got a whole bunch of them dancing with you, you know, See, more than likely. You missed know what I'm saying? opportunity. Thanks, mom and dad, for oh, putting man, me into I'm a white high school. Fuck. I could have been in a. Check this out. You know, I could have had that. This is kind of a messed up story, but um, not really, because I think that nobody was doing this maliciously, but it was still kind of fucked up, though, was that we used to have, like, a white kid that was in the uh, special ed classes back then, but he would go to every school dance, dog, and he, like, this kid looked like, uh, no, no, I mean, like, like nothing bad, <laughs> but this kid looked like um, Stuart Little if he was a person, so, like, he was, like, a little, like, he's a mouse, tiny, bro. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like he was like a little tiny, really small white kid with really skinny, big ass glasses, and like okay. always like wore his shirt tucked in and shit. You know what I'm saying? I feel like maybe I'm imagining this this that he has suspenders. I don't know, but I just feel like if he did, he went to school. He went with along with the, cold, bro. Pr- pretty much, but like I said, but he was he was he was mentally challenged. Like not to make fun of his mental him being mentally challenged at all, because we never did. I never saw anybody pick on that kid. You know what I'm saying? Like for that. But every school dance, he would go to it, bro. And I'm talking, like, he would turn up, bro. Like, he would be in the corner by himself at first, just, like, doing his dance moves and shit. And then he would make his way, like, I guess his song would come on. I don't know what his song was or what, but he would, like, make his way to the middle of the dance floor every dance, bro. He would, it would just come a time where he would just be like, oh, I got to go turn up. And he would just get to the middle of the dance floor and be in that mug doing his thing. And the whole school, he would be dancing so hard that really the whole school, literally, dog, would be See? standing around him going. It's like Rudy. Oh. Exactly, dog. What and it was. would be looking at this kid and be like, go white boy, go white boy, <laughs> yeah, right. go white boy, go white boy. He would be dancing yo, he and shit, spinning. like doing the spins and shit. He had I it mean, all down. Dan- he couldn't do all that, you know what I'm saying? But, like, legitimately, he he had his moves and he was doing them. And them shits was kind of hot for him, you know what I'm saying? So, literally, I don't think the, nobody in the school was really, like, doing that to make fun of him. It was more so, like, yeah, out of like, disbelief. Like, know, like, it was like, when damn. That, when that special kid hits, like, a three-pointer at the end of some basketball game where they're like, yeah, go in and play. But it's like, 
right. oh, you know, everyone gets hyped up because it's dope. Right, right. That's what I'm Not saying. Bad. Like, I legit feel like that's what was going on. And I swear, I bet you that kid to this day probably remembers that oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, He's probably, probably still like, doing those moves right now. Like, eh. Oh, probably. Eh. But get this, though. So the ultimate climax to the story was, oh, I remember God. one year. The climax? Uh, nah, well, he probably did. But I remember one year. He was a, uh, he was doing that, and this girl was like, "Oh yeah, get it, get it." So she started letting, started to dance up on him. You know what I'm saying? She started throwing the booty. He's like, oh. <laughs> but uh, then like the, I think I guess like the assistant principal saw that and was like, "Nah, nah, nah, yeah, stop right. this. You, fuck <laughs> that. you can't do this yeah. to this kid." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We gotta draw the line somewhere up in here. You know what I mean? He's gonna but pick dude, you up like, and run out of this place and just. <laughs> Damn, you know what I'm remembering too? Bro, you should have went to school in Virginia, dog. Cause check this out. In seventh grade, I went to the state science fair, right? Like me and my homie did a part in a science project and won like the whole city and shit. Like we was just crushing. And then we got to the state level and we lost. But the state level was at fucking JMU out there where your parents oh, live. It's like a balling ass college. Balling ass college, right? Dude, so we had yeah. we had the whole dorms to ourselves, mixed, mixed co-ed dorms, motherfucking uh, I mean, it was only there for like one night, I think. But then they had a dance, or we went to the dance with literally every science fair winners, all of this from like all around the state. Yeah, it wasn't even just science fair people. It was like that were just like it wasn't even just that pussy. It was literally like just other kids too, though that they that the school just brought along. Like it was like regular kids too. So it was like people that weren't even in the science fair that came to watch it. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like the entire state of Virginia at this party, dog. So like we in JMU's cafeteria and. uh it was going down up in there, bro. Like, legit to the point where so I, uh, these girls that we met, like, because I don't know what it was. Like, we was like the kings of this science fair for some reason, bro. I think it's because my homie was crazy. He was just talking to every white person that he saw because we just we had never really been around a lot of white people at that time. So, like, we was, like, riding their skateboards and shit. So, like, they all knew us and shit. So we got to the dance. These white girls was, like, actually, one of them was white. One of them was, like, light-skinned chick pulled us into the elevator and was trying to go up in the elevator with us and hit the stop button and shit. Our teacher, our teacher that saw us was like, yo, all y'all get out of the elevator. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. All y'all get out of the <laughs> I promised your it parents there would be no pregnancies this weekend. That's the one promise Bro, I made. That was amazing, that. I, I, I kind of totally forgot about all that shit, man. Just like, the greatness of middle school, bro. I think I had more fun in middle school than I did high school, bro. Because high school started too early in the daytime for me, man. I just went to remember being sleepy all through high school, dog. I had to get up at like 6 a.m. Dude, my shit was all... So I had to be at school at like 7.15 every... Yeah, that's every that's early as fuck in the morning, dog. Yeah, my school too. 7.20 in the morning. Like, you would get out of school at 2, but it's just like, God damn, bro. Like, yeah. I'm trying to wake up this morning. Oh, I got real okay. good at sleeping where it looked like you were working. You know, like a lot yeah. of this, a lot of just like, you know, Hell getting yeah, that bro. getting that fulcrum point where you could actually like fall asleep and not get called out on it and shit. I was really good at that stuff. Oh man, that reminds me too. I was just we're having these little felt flashbacks. Remember how much of a feeding ground the public school bus system used to be, dude? Like if you were like anything wrong uh, with you when you rode the bus to school. You was going to get talked about. Dude, <laughs> yes. the anxiety of a fat kid. Like, <laughs> dude, I got lucky because I was actually, I mean, I got bullied, but I was cool enough where I really never, I was in the mid to back of the bus where you were throwing all the insults towards the front of the, I was still back right, enough right. where I was. You were in the, uh, that's the laughing gallery. Like the exactly. back of the bus kids yeah. would, you know, make fun of the front of the bus kids. And like in the middle, you just laugh. You know what I'm saying? Like, so well, I would get, get in on it. You. I would get in on it. Cause oh, I, thought, oh, you know, okay, I would okay. actually get in the mix a little bit because I oh, could, man. I mean, the people I went to school with in Ohio, <laughs> once I figured out the insults where it was all fat and I was ready for it, I was ready to like throw some shit back at them. But one thing I remember was like when I had to ride the bus and you knew like you had, invariably if you're going to school there's a kid on a bus that wants to fuck with you specifically no matter oh, who yeah. you are as a kid oh, yeah there's somebody not just else. you every, every kid yeah like, he's, exactly. he's, he just he smells weakness oh that's yeah. what it is yeah, you know that what I mean? guy that <laughs> kid where you just <laughs> that you kid. see that yes. smile when you do so you're like oh fuck fuck but no i remember that anxiety because i had a kid in my neighborhood when i first moved mm. to ohio where i was new i was fat I was afraid to like get called, like be singled out. 
And I remember this one kid, like for the first year of my life, when I would get on that bus, I'd have to be like, you'd always see him in the window. And if you couldn't, you'd be like, Oh, like maybe today it'll be okay. Like he's not gonna be there, but then you'd get on and be like, "Son of a bitch!" Like he was like laying down or some shit. But as soon as you get on, it's like he smelled you. He's like, "Oh, hey there!" And you just think, "Fuck, I'm not gonna get out of this one." I do remember oh, that man. shit, bro. I'm trying to tell you, dog. The bus that I used to ride. First off, like where I grew up in Virginia, it's like. Uptown, downtown, and overtown, or midtown, or whatever that you want to call it, right? So essentially, what it was was that downtown was like the hood. Most places downtown is the nice part of the city, but our school was in downtown. All the downtown kids was crazy. Uh, it's kind of like the same neighborhood where like Iverson and uh, Vic came up from and stuff. And like I lived in midtown, which was like across the other side of the train tracks from there. So like literally, like if I walked across the train tracks where my school was, like from where my house was, I would literally be like right in front of my school almost. But where was where the school was was kind of like the hood, and then uptown was where like all of like the uh, you know fucking kids stayed that were like kind of more well off and shit. So basically, the bus I rode because I lived in Midtown was a combination of all three. So like it was some kids that kind of lived uptown. It was where we lived. We were kind of like the main amount of kids on that bus, but the neighborhoods weren't really that big. So, you know, just be kind of like every stop had like two or three kids. And then our last couple, like two stops, we would go and pick up like 50 fucking kids from like the apartments and shit, like oh, just yeah. Oh, yeah. flood the bus. And then we would go to school. Right. And then we would go home in reverse. So like we would drop the downtown kids off. Then they drop us off then the uptown kids. Right. So Basically, I had the most predatory bus system that you ever seen in your life, dog. Cause like I remember like day one, I get on the bus in ninth grade, and it was this kid that used to live in our neighborhood who like I guess some stuff went on before with him and these other kids, bro. But he literally like I think what it was that they used to make fun of him and this kid's mom saw that, so she like yelled at them all. So they just never let this shit slide from that day on. Oh, no. So <laughs> Yeah, bro. So like this kid gets on the bus day one motherfucking uh dude sits down and the guy's like hey man tell your mama be over there tonight she better keep it ready for me or something oh, like that right oh, yeah man. you know but this kid to his credit like looks right back and he's like man you tell your mama uh i like i'm still stinking from the day before or some shit that's the neighbors <laughs> like so it just was like a back and forth between them all the time i remember that kid got his saxophone thrown at another kid one time like it was he was even in this fight like this girl got mad at this other kid one day she picked up this dude's he had like a fucking baritone sax that he played like the big one she picked that shit up and threw it across the bus at this kid bro like the whole box like went flying across our bus like so many different things happened with this dude but i remember one day like the bully of the bus fucking uh got in trouble he got suspended because of this kid i think his mom told him again some type of way and uh Man, they beat his ass, bro. Like he got off the bus that day, and he was like, "Oh, you thought we?" He's like, "Oh, you thought I was gonna get suspended? Then you won't go have to ride the bus home with me?" He's like, your mama. He's like, literally, he's like, "Your mama should have gave you a ride home. We gonna fuck you up." Oh my god, bro. So like, he gets off the bus and instantly starts trying to run. And like, the way that this one stop was was that you would have to drop these kids off on this one street, and then like it was a one way street, so you had to like make a go around the block again to like go up the road where we needed to go. So like, these kids knew that this kid gets off the bus, they chase him down and catch him. I'm pretty sure they fucked him up uh, while this is going on. Uh -huh. But then they they pin him up against the wall and wait for the bus to come back around <laughs> and literally, like, crucified his kid up against the fucking fence. Like, they got, like, his hands held and shit. And then the kid that's the bully waits for the bus to come up. He looks at the bus driver in the eye, looks at everybody on the bus in the eye, and gut punches this kid as hard as I've ever seen anybody uh, get punched in the stomach, dog. Like, I'm talking, like, probably ruptured his kid's spleen or some shit, bro. Uh, and just, wow, like, and the kid falls to the ground, and I'm just like, yo, dude, this is possibly the craziest shit ever. And what's even wilder is that kid that pushed that kid used to play basketball with me and shit, like, all the fucking time, bro. Like, I used to be so scared of that dude, but would never say that. About like, I was just like, yeah, we friends. <laughs> but, yeah, that was, was also oh, yeah. weird. It was, like, a neighborhood bully, because that kid I was talking about lived in, like, the neighborhood oh, yeah. I lived in. So, like... You would sometimes, like, he would be involved in, like, maybe, a, like you said, a basketball game, and you're just playing with your friends in the yard. So he'd be there, but the whole time you're like, oh, fuck, like, is this guy going to fucking beat my ass right now? Even if you're having fun or whatever, like, it was right. weird that you got put in those situations. Also, fights at my school, 
like I went to a suburban bullshit Northwest Ohio school, Perrysburg High School. What's up? Shout out. Uh, but like the fights there were always like white rage fights where it was like a nerd doing something hugely drastic. Like I remember one time this kid, I don't even remember what the circumstances was, but we had like those plastic, like, you know, cafeteria trays, like the hard ones. They oh yeah. Heavy. And it, with all the indentations, like these shits weren't the like shit at a, uh, uh, it's the same shit they court. give you in jail. Yeah, exactly. Like that kind of shit. <laughs> so um with the uh the slot for the corn, the bread, yeah. the big wet piece of pizza. <laughs> yeah. And like the even the silverware has a thing on the side. Oh shit. yeah. So Hell like yeah. he took this thing. This kid was like a skinny nerd, white nerdish dude. And he went up to this whatever, I forget what it was, and he tapped some he waited for this kid to take his tray to the garbage to like empty it out. He got up behind him and, like, got the shit cocked back in his hand, tapped him, grabbed it with two hands, and wailed this kid in the face. Oh, my I mean, God, dog. Frank Thomas, big hurt style, Major League Baseball swing, hit this Bro, kid like directly in the premeditated face. premeditated murder oh, shit, damn near. If that kid had died, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think he knocked some teeth out, and he kept going. Like, they had to pull somebody oh else of him. Because, like, you know, like high school – this was high school, so I mean, these were like yeah. full-grown dudes, but they were not little fucking right. middle school kids either. So that's what always scared me. I was just like, I was good at like seeing when shit was gonna go down and being like, oh, like you just slide away. Right, right. Away. <laughs> I you mean, you get that spidey that. sense, dude. Hell yeah, you better that's have that shit, man. That shit'll save your life, especially as an adult. Especially in college Dude. when I was like surrounded by animals and they would get in bar fights and I'm stuff. I'm about to say. Like, okay, I smell some fucking crazy in the air. Like, right. What's going on here? Because I had my. Uh, no matter what, if I'm in a fight, if I'm surrounding somebody and I'm just like not involved and I'm like with somebody in a fight, I'm big. So I'm going to get like club punched in the face just off the <laughs> Yeah, they're just like, we got to knock That's him That's what down. always happens. I'm always like, oh, and like, you know, somebody will pass by. I'll just be like, I'm <laughs> like, this ain't oh, my man. fight, y'all. Bro, I remember uh, like think, speaking of that Spidey sense and shit and not having it because like I, I went to college in Atlanta. So like in, uh, where Morehouse College is, this is in the west end of Atlanta, which is like, you see snow on the bluff? Oh, yeah. That's the neighborhood that they uh, shot Snow on the Bluff in. I forgot yeah, about like that's that where this, movie, dude. Yeah, that's where that's that's where this college is, and I didn't even know this. Like, I went to Morehouse really kind of like not knowing shit. Like, I remember I saw School Days back in the day, but yeah. didn't understand that that was the college he was referencing or whatever. So, like, when I got there, I was just kind of like totally green. But like, I got a job because my cousin worked for the train system and shit. So I used to walk to and from work through this neighborhood every day. Nothing ever happened to me. I would constantly hear stories where it was like oh, somebody got robbed over there and they beat this kid and took all his clothes and shit. And they told us day one, like, in the dorms, they was like, yo, if you're walking around in these neighborhoods, do not fuck with the locals because these people ain't playing with you. Like, they, were, they told us a story where this one kid thought he was hard, was always, you know, fronting in the dorms and shit, wanted to be a rapper, smoking weed and all that shit. And uh, they said he went up to some guys in the neighborhood. Like, he was out there, like, you know, trying to buy weed off of somebody he ain't know or something. So I got to talk to loose and they sent him home to this college butt ass naked, like literally like robbed him of everything down to his fucking draws, dog. Like <laughs> it's crazy. So I already was like, yeah, I already was like, I'm not fucking with these people. You know what I'm saying? But um, then I said, tell you like in the, in the reverse side of not having that though, a buddy of mine uh, got his jaw broke by kids. We actually went to school with on Halloween. He said he was coming back from his girl dorm. These guys throw some eggs at him and shit. So he's like, man, y'all some bitches for that or whatever, like, said something. And then, like, seven dudes, you know, trying to put their flex on or whatever, ran up on him. And, like, one guy swung and hit him and broke his jaw. So that guy's credit. I went to school. He never told on that kid. Like, he said he saw him. So I was like, man, man. I told him. I was like, man, you, like, if you still see him, you should get him suspended, dog. It's not like that's just not recorded. I was like, fuck him, man. Like, he, he broke your jaw. You. I mean, if you get punched and just get – I mean, even if you get knocked out, I get, like – Bro, I could see brushing because that of that, like, bit, but that's fucked up. Nah, man. Because of that, that kid didn't even go to school for like four or three months. He like he was set back in school. Like he had to do another semester because he stayed home because his jaw was wired shut. Yeah, you, know you can't like, do shit. You can't exist yeah. in college like that. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, and I mean, to his, like, the guy that got it done to him, like, he was from, like, Arizona and shit. And he's a good dude, man, good friend of mine. But I just felt like, I, I remember when he finally came back, we were kind of asking him about it. And I, I was saying to him, I was like, well, when they threw the eggs at you, I was like, was it a distance between y'all? Like, it was like a big space or whatever. And he was like, yeah, they wasn't right up on me at first. I was like, yeah, man, like, you should have just kept that space and not said nothing then. Because, like, you can't let seven dudes <laughs> surround you just from a no, fight standpoint. No, no. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he was like, well, what was I supposed to do, run, man, or just not say nothing? I was like, in that instance, yeah. I was like, man, sometimes, bro, it's not really being a bitch. It's being strategic. I was like, I always tell people this shit, man. Bruce Lee will tell you, the best fight you can fight is the one you don't have to. He was like, if you ain't mad or if it ain't no reason you ain't got to fight somebody and they being aggressive and shit, if you could talk them out of it or just walk away from a fight, he was like, that's the fight that you really win. He's like, because then it ain't no, it ain't no loss. Like, you didn't, because like, even when you fight somebody, you still get scratches on your hands, on your knuckles, your fingers hurt, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could get hit in the face, like, anything could happen to where, like, you might win a fight, but you, you still might die. Loss. Right, exactly, you For know what real? I'm saying? And that's, that's why he was like, any fight that you don't have to fight is always going to be the best fight, man. Now, have I always taken that advice? No. But <laughs> at the same time, though, it's something that I always keep ringing in the back of my mind where it's like, yeah, man, be smart about this shit. Like, be strategic. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of what is crazy about all of this uh, Black Lives Matter shit right now, dude. Because I think that's kind of one of the things we're doing out there is fighting a lot of fights that we don't necessarily have to fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, or at least going out there with no strategy as to, like, what you're going to build on. You know what I mean? Like, I think everybody's just in the mindset of fucking shit up right now. <clears throat> but Yeah, I don't, I don't really hear a lot. One thing I'm, you know, I don't want to stick on this too much, but the one thing I'm, like, been kind of uh trying to find and i really haven't found anything is uh you know obviously there's a lot of just shit out there where like you said it's just them being angry and just like talking about shit that's happening but i mean you really don't hear a lot about any sort of ideas for other than reparations and shit like that like what it's gonna look like moving forward so that is weird right i mean I could kind of get behind the reparations debate a little bit, but to me, that shit still isn't going to solve what the underlying issue is. You know what I'm saying? Like, the real issue is something nobody wants to talk about, and really, I think it's something that's at the base of all of the things that we hold true in America, dude. Like, anything that you could think of, capitalism, right? At the base of capitalism is racist. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, how do they get rich off of capitalism? They fucking had slaves and shit. You know what I'm saying? Or if you want to say, like, free markets or whatever you know, like black people were traded on the free market dog like some black people were worth more than others you know what i'm saying like even just that in itself is a crazy thing to think about like it's like if you were selling soda you know what i'm saying it's like well that's the limited edition coke over there it's four dollars more you know what i'm saying just you know for examples of shit but like i think because of the way that everything's been set up like any institution dog like you go to sports you go to fucking movies you go to uh business lawyers doctors it's all divided racially you know what i'm yeah. saying so like and that's why I think trying to get to the heart of what racism really is breaks apart everything. You know what I'm saying? Which I don't think people want to do that. I think really, if you really listen to what's the dialogue right now, everybody because of that virus, especially wants it to go back to normal. You know what I'm saying? But what you got to realize is normal ain't normal no more. <clears throat> it's, it's companies that's not going to exist no more. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's artists. It's, it's things that you love and know about like that you had in the past that are not going to ever exist again. Like, I just saw, like, Logan Steakhouse is closing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never went there, but, you know, that's a place that people know about. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, like, that shit's not around no more. Applebee's all in places like that. Fucking uh, Hertz is going out of business. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so, I mean, like, the world ain't going to be the same. You know what I mean? Now, is that a good or a bad thing? We got to wait and see. You know what I mean? I just feel like um, for any, like, if you're just talking racism in general and, like, for especially for America – the idea that you could just pay people that just exist now and that's going to take care of like that's right. the problems over is just kind of a limit. I, it helps definitely a lot of people are going to be happy about getting some extra money that they weren't expecting. But the idea that if you start, you do that and then it's all over with, it's like you said, I mean, you got to take a look at every thing in society and then rectify that too on top of it and it's i mean i'm a regular person and the idea of that's daunting to me even though i think it's necessary and for the people that are making money off of where the way it's going now i mean they don't you know that's a lot of work that they don't want to do because it's basically for those people they're like all i'm doing is going to take money out of my pocket however it is whatever change it is so 
I don't know, man. It's like a weird time because you want all these things. You want like a, a quick, finite thing where it's like, this is over with now. And it's just right. not possible for any of the shit that we're talking about, for the virus, for any of the shit. Because, you know, like you said, everyone wants to get back to normal. And it's, I think, mostly an economic thing where all these like small businesses are failing and even bigger businesses like Hertz and all these movie theaters and shit like that, they're failing <laughs> too. So from an economic perspective, I mean, I think it's important to reopen and maybe what we did as a country uh, was a little extreme, but I think, it, you know, obviously... Uh, we didn't have information to go off of. Nobody had correct information at the beginning right. to base off any decision off of. So to call the reaction extreme or to call what's happened as a result of that, um, you know, extreme is, it's questionable because ultimately I think that what's happened here is that we didn't, if you look at this as an overall thing, we don't have leadership that can, uh, really do anything right now they don't Hell have yeah. <clears throat> they're not smart they're not organized they're not on the same page obviously because there's two parties working all that bullshit supposedly and uh there's just the biggest thing to me is that the people that are installed in all of the leadership roles in this country from mayors to council people to the president of the united states and all the people that he has around him there's probably 5% of those people that are qualified to do the jobs that they're doing. They might be smart people. They might, you know, be great at one thing, whether that's making money or they have a degree in some uh, doctorate or some shit. But uh, for us to lead a country, uh, we need to figure out a different way to do this. Um, just because what I've seen is that there's no leadership. It's just a bunch of people that it's like at a job when you don't have an answer and you're right. scrambling around blaming other people because you don't want to look bad. Well, that's our whole government now. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, you know what's crazy to me? It's funny you would mention that at your job. Like, to me, that's how every business is run. Like, where it's like the guy at the top, what he really wants to do is be Trump. So he sits on his high horse, he collects the checks, you know what I'm saying? And he gets all the money and shit. And when it comes to really, like, being in charge or whatever, they want to pass the buck. You know what I mean? So like then like the owner will go and get a, a general manager. So then he puts all that on a general manager, you know what I'm saying? But really the general manager is just a regular dude like everybody else too. And he does his responsibilities. He wants to get his check, go home like everybody else. So what happens is he winds up kind of just, you ever been in a job where it's like your boss tell you to do something, but they don't tell you how to do it. So really at the end of the day, you're just like in charge of yourself. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's every yeah. job, dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> I was about to say, that's every job I've ever worked. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, like, really at the decision-making point of it all, it's really you. Like, I mean, that's kind of like if you want to talk about the cops and shit. Like, even if you want to, like, uh, say, a, you know, every police chief says we're not going to be racist no more, it's kind of impossible because if you look at every police force, and I, 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 I would I hope maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this stat is right. I haven't looked it up. But every police force is racially divided in a way where it's more white cops than black cops. That's every city in America. I mean, it just has to probably be the case because I don't think it's been possible for black cops to be cop or black people to be cops as long as it's been for white people. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Common you know sense. Right, and from what I understand, it's kind of like one of those jobs, like firefighters too, where it's kind of like a family did job, where like your dad was a cop, your granddad was a cop, so you become one. You know what I'm saying? Or like same thing with firefighters, same thing with like correction officers too. Like it's kind of like they keep all that shit in the family. So that's what, another reason why it's not a lot of us too. You know what I'm saying? But uh, just even in that, like I'm saying, like at the end of the day, it's going to come down to the general cop as the worker making the decisions. Like it don't matter what his boss said. It's like in that moment at that time, do I make that decision? You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's how everything is run. You know what I mean? Unless we're all robots. Like at the end of the day, like how, how you feel that day is going to depend on how you treat people. And if you're hungry, if you're tired, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So all that's just the truth, but in terms of like our leadership and shit, it's so dangerous that that's the way that we run things because I feel like the real job of a leader is to be able to hear all of the incoming information and then discern that into an actionable plan. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's okay for you to say, I might not know everything about science, but I got all the top scientists over here. Y'all tell me what's going on. Okay, all that sounds good. I got these options, that option, this option. Let me think about it. 
let me hear what the military got to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not wrong to do that. And what I think is going on is that at some point, all that shit is just going out the window and somebody's being like, nah, fuck all that. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of well, what it seems like. Especially with, like, if you're the president who, I mean, if he has any sort of power, people are running information by him as a president, like, in general, for that job, then, you know, I think really what a president needs to be able to do baseline bottom line, he has all these experts around him. That's what a cabinet is. That's what all his advisors are. Those are people that know more than he does because nobody knows everything about everything. So we can't have somebody that you want that, but what the guy needs or woman or whoever needs to do be is somebody who can, if nothing else, like if somebody's telling him what to do, like he can't even, bring information into his head and like be like okay well these are my options even if he can't do that he has to be able to get a message out there that's not this garbled piece of shit like you got to be able to tell people what's going on like in any other yeah, yeah, if you yeah. had a boss that's like well you know we're doing okay but we're bad and like and they just were like jumbling around making up bullshit You'd be like, what is going on here? Like, do you have, like, what's the answer to the question? Oh, man. Like you it's, have- it's like watching, uh, like, you ever been, like, uh, stuck inside of, like, your sheet or something? Like, you went to sleep real crazy, like, your blanket's all wrapped around so you can't get out of it in the morning? That's what he looked like giving a speech. Like, he trying to, like, <laughs> wrestle his way out of a fucking tied up you, knot or have some Have you shit. ever been caught in a lie where you had been telling oh, a yeah. lie? And then you get caught. So you're like, uh, and that feeling inside where it's like that you, it's that feeling that's you're like embarrassment coming up through your body and like heating up your face. And you're trying to like figure out all the lies so you can tell this other lie, but you just can't do it. Well, that to me is what he does because in every, in every speech. Well, and and exactly. And the thing of it is like to you, to me, right. If I'm telling you a lie, it's kind of easy for me to kind of, keep track of it because it's you and me i there's nobody else looking at our conversations and examining all these quotes and shit but that's thousands of people's job is to just listen to what this guy says and analyze it it. yeah exactly you can't handle that so when somebody's like uh what about this that you said yesterday or tweeted like and he's got <laughs> tweets and shit it's not just shit he's yeah. said he has to remember it's written I down remember, <laughs> i don't remember a damn thing i've ever tweeted like i have i would have to be like uh i think i was high as fuck that day i like you know like, oh man he can't handle that and Hell also yeah, so for him he's so arrogant that he can't take accepting like i've been caught or i'm wrong right any of that because he's that ain't an option. He's like, no, yeah. you listen to me. I'm the guy in charge. It's like, no, you're not. You're just some dumbass fucking. Well, what's like, crazy about it is, is that the blueprint <clears throat> already exists, dog. Like Reagan and Bush were exactly what we're talking about. A puppet where put your hand up the ass, yeah. read these lines, and walk away. Do not say nothing else. Don't, don't smile. Panic, don't laugh. People. Don't wave. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's all Trump had to do. Like, even if somebody brought up a question about something he said, he could have just been like. I'm not here to answer those questions at this time. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? And just walk yeah. away. And then you win. You win. You know what I'm saying? But somehow, you could literally, like, <laughs> you know, you could be talking about any fucking thing, dog. Like, you could just be saying anything. And it'd be like, hey, Trump, we heard that uh, someone said you had a little dick. What you think about that? <laughs> he going to fucking give it time. Oh. Like, he's going to give it air time. You know what I'm saying? And, like, even as a man in a bar somewhere, like, with your homie, somebody does that to you. You're supposed to be like, hey, fuck you, motherfucker. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you keep it pushing. Like, you ain't supposed to be, first off, Don't acknowledge. I've, been with, I've been with many women. Yeah. Many, many women. And none of them have ever complained. And I wouldn't call it little, okay? I would say fairly average. Fairly. Man, if, <laughs> and if you, like, if you were in a group of people and that happened, and that guy, the person said that, the group of people would be like, man, shut the fuck up. Like, because that's just the right. Cool thing but my whole thing is also, um, <sighs> God damn, I totally forgot what I was about to say. Just keep going. Keep riffing. I'll oh, okay. Going. Well, I mean, like, that was thing oh, about I'm him sorry. Too, I'm though. sorry. Are you good? Go ahead. Get it, man. Um, just an example of this where it's totally a perfect example. If you're on a plane, right, and you get into some turbulence, you don't want the cockpit guy to be like, 
uh, we're fucked up. Uh, you know, this is a good flight, but uh, I'm just uh, we should be fine. Like something like that, where it's like, what the fuck? You right. need to start panicking. So you don't want that. You want the guy to be like, uh, everything's gonna be okay. Just a little bit of turbulence. Uh, just put your seatbelts on, and we'll get through this together. Or, you know, whatever right. it is. As long as it's like that, at least it doesn't like it's not doesn't set off some immediate fuck up where it's like, dude, you just panicked the whole nation. Like they're they're looting the streets, motherfucker. Like he can literally right. make that happen. You know, not so- even to check this out. Not even to that level though. Same thing you're talking about. I used to be a bartender, bro, and just people get on your fucking nerves. You know what I'm saying? But like because you're at the front all day, people see you. You know what I'm saying? Like I've had my manager take me to the back and be like. And you got to remember, you're always on stage up there, man. Like, I know, like, it's, it's tired, and you get exhausted or whatever, and people get on your nerves, but, like, just, you still got to smile and wave and laugh as a bartender. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm not even running the country. I'm making drinks, motherfucker. Like, you can't keep the show on. Just, like, if he would have done that from day one, I would have had so much more confidence in him. I might even vote for the motherfucker the second time. You know what I'm saying? Just because, like, if he could have done that, I would have been like, well, you know what? I don't really trust a Democrat, so... At least he's following the script or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And we ain't dead yet or whatever. But, like, that motherfucker, bro, he just you takes just it left field every time. Yeah, it's just out of, it's out the blue. Like, what are you talking about? Like, he called the people thugs. Then, he, then you seen the shit? You seen the shit with, uh, they okayed it so that, you know, you can't be discriminated as a, uh, as a gay person. Or you know whatever, or then he then they put the thing out right then about the trans people, and he's talking about oh yeah I don't know he want to extend the rights and all this. It's like damn bro, like this was the easiest layup ever, bro. All you had to do was be like it's a great day for people, you know, for everybody, you know what I'm saying, and just show the love, you know what I mean. The gay couples, we love y'all. That's all you had to do was come out there and say some shit like that. <clears throat> nah. Especially from like, the fucking perspective crazy. of somebody that's trying to get reelected, like right. eat some fucking shit and just like just shut the fuck up. But also. On him saying dumbass shit in public. Did you see what he said about the AIDS vaccine? Nah, what's he about that? He was saying about how we're what we're uh, like way further along uh, for this vaccine for COVID, right? Oh God! But in the same sense, he's like, it's much like the, he said something like, it's like the AIDS vaccine. There ain't no fucking AIDS vaccine. Yeah, there you know ain't. what I mean? Yeah, it's a dumbass. Yeah, right. Or he's uh, the other, uh, if you want to go conspiratorial deep on it, people are like, oh, there is an AIDS vaccine and he knows about it and he let it slip to the public that there. So, okay. <laughs> Either way, you're fucking up oh, on your job. You know, you I mean, up. honestly, though, like the thing with me and the conspiracy <clears throat> theorists, people with Trump, I don't think that he's really smart enough to even contain all that information in his mind like if they no. told him about the aliens and shit like he probably they probably did tell him and he just forgot so like you yeah, know what i mean like a stroke bro i mean maybe bro he, he something looked more off with him from day one though i mean hey they, that's what it was the deep state actually gave him a stroke see see if you watch battling with that that's what it was. They have an, yeah. they have some sort of his implant. You can just like click a button. It's like give him a little stroke. It's like the Men in Black like mind eraser, except it's actual right. stroke. They're like, we'll just kill that part of his brain real quick. Well, we know where that memory it's, is. I mean, it's a but bunch that's of brain crazy. dead motherfuckers out here right now, man, for sure, dog. <laughs> On all sides, everybody, bro. It's like I don't think people can think for themselves no more, man. Like I think that if somebody hasn't got reinforcement from another place, even me, like to an extent, like. I go and listen to things that I think agree with my already, you know, thought process kind of. And to a degree, I feel like I try to step outside the box and listen to some other shit. But, I mean, I don't stand around and listen to a lot of fucking Ku Klux Klan rhetoric. I'm, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's, a, that's our boy, Sean. <laughs> Remember Sean told you that? Dude, I couldn't believe that when he told me that shit. I was like, I may, that's hilarious that he would oh, do man. that. But, I mean, God damn. Our buddy, who is married to a white woman, <laughs> um, actually listens to KKK. He's black. Uh, Let's just put that out. Yeah, he's married he's, to a yeah, white woman. Yeah. He's black. <laughs> yeah, he's black. He listens to KKK podcasts um, in his free time sometimes because he said he just finds that shit funny as hell. And we'll just, you know, be like, listen to somebody just ranting off some craziness, like, them damn in words we're trying to tell you. They, they running the White House on I think he from- was trying to fuck with one of them, too. Wasn't he trying to, like, do some shit with them on my, like... I mean, to his credit, somehow? though, 
I mean, you get to hear different things you wouldn't have heard before. I mean, I don't know if I want to hear that, but, I mean, you got to I mean, step I, outside your box to grow, so. I, mean, I feel yeah. like that's kind of like if you were in war and, like, you're a U.S., like, you got the enemy's, like, radio transmissions so you can hear what they're saying and they don't know you're <laughs> listening type shit. I well, mean, I mean, honestly. I can't uh, imagine I, a KKK podcast. It's probably this. <laughs> but they just when they watch YouTube videos, they're like, "God damn, look at these motherfuckers right here!" It's just like, <laughs> it's like, wait, this is just mm. red and lame. This is just Good Mythical Morning with racists in it. Well, uh, well, check this out though. I will say, as a black person though, I don't have a problem with the Confederate flag, but not for the reasons that you would think. The reason why I don't have a problem with the Confederate flag is because it makes you more easily identified. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather you be wearing that shit or flying it somewhere and I can see you coming at me than to be an undercover racist and be doing shit behind closed doors and I can't figure out what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. at least I know if you got that shit flying, then it's like, oh, okay, I see what you rocking with. Cool. I know to be watching out for you at any given point in time. So you've already given up your biggest um, advantage in a fight is if you can use the element of stealth surprise, you know what I'm saying? You already gave that up. So I'm ready. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. I mean, as a white wow. dude, when yeah. I see that, it's like, Oh, I'm not going to hang out with, I'm never going to listen to this person or put myself near this person or, you know, if they're right. I've never met anybody that gave a fuck. Like to me, if you give a fuck about a flag, like even the American flag, well, I get it, but it's like, who cares really? Like, yes, what, is it yes, really affecting real. your life that much? Shut the fuck well, up. That's how I feel about the, uh, the anthem. I'm like, are we in such a fragile nation that we have to have everybody do the same thing during a fucking song, dude? Like, yeah. don't nobody get mad. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't get mad because you're not dancing to Beyonce girls run the world when it come on, you know what I'm saying? It's the same fucking shit, you know what I mean? And the song not even that goddamn good. Our national anthem sucks. It's not, yeah. it's not entertaining. <laughs> I mean, national anthems as a whole, they just need to get reworked. They just sound like fucking, they're just so fucking boring. Like Canada's, right. ours, it's like, okay, I get it. Man. You don't want to disrespect the memory of people, but it, like, if somebody is like sitting there, like, kneeling or whatever like flicking off the camera with a sign that says fuck america then maybe you should have a problem with it but if some guy wants to put his knee down or not like, do this or put his hand on his heart then All just right. fucking let the guy do what he wants because if he wanted to do some other shit like he's like hey i want to worship the unicorn god because i'm a unicorn is you wouldn't you couldn't say anything now like you they've sub they've basically sectioned it off where you could call somebody out uh, for this, but like, if I want to be like, I'm, I feel like I'm, fo I'm fox. Like spiritually, I am that of a fox. So <laughs> I want to be acknowledged as such. You gotta listen to that bullshit. Or Bro, you know what I think is funny. Uh, you, <laughs> you know what's funny about spirit animals? Nobody's spirit animal is ever something fucked up. Like you ever notice that? Like everybody's always got like the most majestic or shit. Like nobody's spirit animal is ever like a crab or a worm. Yeah, right. <laughs> like it's always a, a pre a like a bird of prey. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's always an eagle or fucking you know a wolf or some shit like that. They never nothing just like stupid. But uh, it's like when people are of, like uh, in a in a previous life I was king. I was a king or something. It's like no one is ever just some like piece of garbage. Right. Or <laughs> right. It's like actually you were a prostitute. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, but check this out, dude. For the national anthem, I got the perfect new remix, dog. You just what gotta get fucking like? DJ up. I mean, shit, hell yeah, that would be even better. I'm trying to kick it tonight. So, baby, tell me what that thing smells like. I'm trying to kick it. If you get Black Jesus, get this. Black get on Jesus. back, dude. And, uh, and DJ Khaled present the national anthem. So, you just got. DJ Khaled! <laughs> he still has the ready. DJ drops in the actual national. <laughs> we yeah, the best! Saying. Exactly. It's like, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Because it's America. So it's like, we the best! And then it just yeah. comes to our plan to be like, America, lands and seeds. And then you just get like some ass shaking and black. Jesus coming and be like, yeah, yeah, lands and seeds. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's going to be nasty, dog. I think, I think that's my new petition, bro. Remix the national anthem. I'm with All right. It. Well, you know, I'm gonna let you work on that. Maybe we can present something to POTUS in the near. That's future. my next song, bro. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta see if Black Jesus is still make doing features. I give him a couple five dollars or something real quick. Jump on the uh, the remix of the national <laughs> anthem with me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Look at 
this the video I have for Black Jesus is dated 2011, and I know that's not. This is obviously not when it was originally made. So, yeah, um, I'm about to say in hip hop years, those guys are probably dead. I was gonna say either <laughs> diabetes or something too, because these men were not small men either. These were some. And they weren't young. Men. They yeah. weren't young in these videos either. Yeah. So I mean, one of them looks <laughs> like E40. Honestly, one of them looks like a fatter E40. But... Oh man. Bro, how funny would it be if those guys are just like 68 years old right now? <laughs> Still touring like in Detroit and shit. Just like, like oh, Jesus man. doing a reunion show. <laughs> oh, this is man. their only fucking song. Like, they could Bro. not have another song. In the verse, old boy says, I want to know what it looked like, what it smelled like, what it feel like, what it tastes like, what it be like. <laughs> Dude, one guy in the video literally runs his fingers over a stripper's pussy and then smells it like this in the video. Like, it's not even alluded to. They, like, follow his fingers up the shit. Oh, I was like, man. On a rewatch. Now, I will say to my wife's credit, she thought this was the funniest video that she's ever seen. It is. The, it's great. Because it's a combination of things. Great song. Poor production quality on the video, though. It's like maybe a mid-tier VCR like camcorder yeah, was used. They shot that on one of them big-ass black tapes, though. <laughs> and if you look they at... They didn't even edit it. I do they edited that shit. Uh, I mean, they edited it. But what I would huh. like to say is that if you go into the video, I mean, we're going to go ahead and just like post this and, you know, there's specific things. But if you look, there's a guy in a suit at one point in this bar, right? And mm -hmm. if you look at the squad of women that they've collected to just be in like the squad in the video, it's like, it looks like they went to like a used car dealership and just took the secretaries that work there and were like, come in your work clothes because they all got like pantsuits and shit on it's just like older no. women black and white while this one stripper is twerking on a table and it just I is mean, like you don't realize this that was probably a stripper too man all those women were probably strippers. oh my they just god just dressed like that they just dress like business women on their way to work and they were just like you know we're good <laughs> so they just like took the best stripper and were like you're gonna strip all you ladies with all this buckshot shit going on in your legs and ass, <laughs> here's some pantsuits from Jay. We're going to take you to JC Penny real quick. You're going to look like my mom. And then we're going to do this video because one of the, there's a white woman in this video who's definitely a stripper, but Oh man. Yeah, dude. Like, like when you're, when you're in like a uh, stripper, she's the, like, that's what I was about to say, man. Yeah. That's deep South. You know, you ever see those stripper clubs that are like <laughs> on the side of the road with the billboards and shit. That's where they got those women from. Like, it's not like you're going to walk in there and see, you know, Halle Berry and shit. Like, you're going to see, you know, Miss Jenkins from 23rd Street. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's, that's what's going on. It's like, this is my, this my fucking second job and shit. You know, I get off working at Chick-fil-A and come over here and shake that ass for a little bit of cash, you know, and get that bread. <laughs> like, shit, got, mama got kids oh. to feed. Fuck it. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> I'm saying, like, that shit. That government check ain't going as long as it used to. I got to get out shit, there. Shit, man. Here. I was about to say, man, to me, I honestly think that for what they plucked, like, think about all the casting rejects <laughs> from what they probably had for this video. Like, those are the winners that got in the video. Like, that would be even oh, worse. Oh, God. Yeah. I I'm feel just, like, like there's you're, no... you're giving them way too much credit, though, because I feel like what they Am I? was like, we got to shoot this today. But, you know, no, like, man. the guy's like, I, I got my suit, but I got to return it to my dad tomorrow so we got to shoot this today <laughs> and whoever we got Ooh. around us these this is what we got to work with how many uh how many music videos have you shot bro i mean like, i've been involved like, in quite a like few. with like uh i'm saying like with like an artist though like somebody that no. like kind of think okay okay so a couple i remember the one that you told me about that's the one specifically so, i remember i think i've done three now and in every one of them this is what winds up, wind up happening. <laughs> Whoever the artist was, when they get on set, it goes Hollywood, dog. Like, they instantly just start, like, pointing directions out and asking all this crazy shit and doing all this wild stuff, you know what I'm saying? It'd be like, oh, yeah, you, you gonna be over there? And I think that maybe, like, we should have somebody doing it like this. And I think maybe, like, if we got time, we'll go over there to where my boy at, because I know I got something there. It's just, like, all types of crazy, convoluted shit with no plan. 
every one of them have done this, dude. I, I spent one time on a music video set, like, it took like three hours to get the rapper to do a scene in which he's supposed to get in the shower with a girl, and he was just, all he had to do was take his shirt off and then go into the shower with the girl, but he was uh, afraid because he had man titties, and he didn't want nobody to see his man titties, so I told him, I was like, dude, I'm just going to shoot it from behind you, like, literally, like, I'll shoot from shoulder up. And then from behind you, I told him that at the first time that we talked about the shot and then for another three hours, he debated as to why he didn't even take his shirt off or could he do it some other type of way. So that's what you're dealing with. So I know black Jesus had to have had a casting dude. If they were, if they're making a video about ass shaking. They probably had more <clears throat> casting. They probably went to every strip club they could find. and was like, yeah. hey, girl, you know, we're going to shoot a music video. Uh, yeah. Me and my homies, you know what I mean? We we black Jesus, we girl. It. We keep it sanctified <laughs> over here, you know what I'm saying? So check it. You, your homies, y'all come down. We go, we go. y'all got to show us what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? Shake a little bit. And uh, we, we'll put y'all in the video. Now, What's up? Are, you mo- are you comfortable <laughs> with a little bit of touch when we shoot this? Because <laughs> they ain't asked that. They ain't asked that. This, this is the Bill Cosby era. There was no consent back yeah, then. Right. You, just, you know what I'm saying? You just showed up to the casting couch like, uh what <laughs> hold on guys uh where's like the, that, where's that the, famous <laughs> porno quote that we used to laugh about where the chick's like can i please have some respect please and they're just like fresh out of respect bitch but uh oh god wesley pipes <laughs> you son of a bitch <laughs> dude, so many great memories i love see these are the real great things that you remember from 20 something year old life it's just Sitting at home with your boys, and then this comes on fucking TV. Or another thing I wanted to talk about, just in terms of questionable, like, shit from our childhood, is how many movies were created where a kid is being threatened by adults in, like, a significant way. Hell yeah. So many ones. And the one I want to bring to light because I think it's the perfect illustration of a lot of things in the nineties is a movie called blank check. Okay. This is a Disney movie for (laughs) live action. It's not animated, but it's basically, this is the story in a nutshell. A kid is just a normal suburban white kid. He gets run over on his bike or hit by a mobster of some kind who has a lot. He just got a bunch of money. I don't remember how exactly. So this mobster, right, is, like, in a hurry to do something. So when he hits this kid, he just writes him a blank check for the bike. So this kid takes a blank check from a mob guy and uses his 90s computer skills to fraudulently make a check for a million dollars. One million dollars. That's it. I think that's actually Mm -hmm. all the money the gangster had, too. That's it. He cashes the check fraudulently and that proceeds to bilk his family uh the community at large the police department or the fbi into thinking that he is this child intern for a man named mr mcintosh and (laughs) then he buys a mansion he has a limo driver who basically i think is when you get to the end of the movie indicates that he knew the kid never had a boss and has been doing all Isn't these his things. his limo driver Sinbad? <clears throat> no, his limo driver's a white guy that was in, like, the movie oh, okay. Herbs and shit. But okay. he basically insinuates that the whole time this kid's been buying shit, taking a limo. I mean, he... This kid almost gets some pussy off a hot female yeah. FBI agent. So... I remember that. All of this stuff is in a Disney movie, but the whole time... Tone Loke is a gangster in this. There's a couple other people that are gangsters that are getting at this kid, pointing guns at this kid, chasing this kid down in a car through a park where the kid's on a bike running away from a car. And I just, I was, well, I was watching this with my wife like a couple weeks ago and I was like, first of all, this is a Disney movie. This is on Disney Plus. You can watch this right now. And how much cocaine the people who created this must have gone through in the whole, like, from beginning to end, like, where they didn't ever question one iota of this movie, where it's like, yeah, this seems all, you know, basically, this is fine. You know, this kid's committing real estate fraud, bank fraud, (laughs) 
wire fraud. Like, uh, don't worry about that. <laughs> he's, he's. I mean, he didn't even get in trouble at the no. end. Like everything worked out. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, I think they pin everything on the gangster, and he just walks away scot free. But like, even the FBI agents, like, oh, you little, you little bitch, you little right. scamp. It's like now, that you kid should have uh, been arrested. You know, a movie's even crazier than that, though, in terms of like threatening kids, though. It's possibly one of my favorite movies of all time. It's fucking Problem Child, dog. Because oh. in that, like, those gr- adults literally say, like, earth-shattering, emotional, destroying things to that kid throughout the movie. And that's why he does what he does. Because he really wasn't bad. Like, he did shit because, like, some Bro, old like, dude, would be like, you little he piece of shit. His, I mean, they did that. But, dude, in the first one, he sets up a camera somehow. First of all, that kid was, like, some kind of, like, uh, technological genius because he could figure out ways to do things example he had a babysitter who stereotypically brought over her like rocker boyfriend to make out with and like fuck while the dad's out and shit that she fucks with him some way so he sets up a camera while they're fucking and then sets up a projector on the outside of his house and projects it on the house. So the whole neighborhood is just watching this babysitter get smashed on. And like, <laughs> what? And, That's what I'm saying, dog. That movie was crazy, dog. That movie is fucking hilarious. Then remember uh, House Arrest? Remember that? Oh, movie? yeah. And the kids locked their parents in the basement and all of their friends' parents? That's what it's like. They had tasers and shit. Like, fucking yeah, like, they electrified the, the door. <laughs> Remember when <laughs> they, they opened it to give them food and the guy's like, I'm gonna fucking electrify you, bro. Yeah, bro. I'm talking about this shit was crazy, dog. Like, just some amazing ass movies came up when we were grown. They don't even make shit like that no more now, dude. No. Like, I don't even, I can't even see that in my head. Like, is there any movie that came out like that recently? They won't even remake Home Alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, oh, shit. I mean, that there's another wild, one where it's like, okay, movie one, the parents lose their kid. Mistakes happen. I get it. I guess that happens. Movie two, when it happens the next year again, and they have to tell the police that right. they somehow forgotten the same kid. Like, right. <laughs> can the police want to not like, be like, look, you got all these kids. This one you keep white privilege, we're dog. taking this motherfucking game. We're taking that was white privilege, dog. That 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 movie is that's what Home Alone is really about. What people don't understand. As a black person, I saw the shit, dog. I seen through the fucking shit, man. Oh, it's all about white privilege and slavery, man. Cause I mean you're if that right, had been bro. a black family, they would have took Kevin McAllister ass and he would have been up in motherfucking CPS getting butt raped by some fucking 15 year old kid or some old man. And then the second home alone would have been way different than the first cause Kevin McAllister ass would have grown up and got out of jail and shit. So that way, when they came back for him to get his ass back, Kevin McAllister would have had some guns and no traps and shit, <laughs> some knives and shanks and shit. <laughs> Just like, I mean, Kevin McAllister literally was like, I mean, it's been brought up, but he's like a child. He is Jigsaw. Like, he basically just sets up these elaborate. And not only that, like, the second one, when he goes to New York, I mean, he's so manipulative that not only does he figure out how to get a a first-class five-star hotel and get through the whole process of getting it, but then he's in there lit max and relax and ordering room service like i wouldn't even know i would be like if i got separated by my parent w- with my parents on a flight of some kind as a child i would be stuck in whatever spot i was when i realized that happened right. like there was Call no like, security crying yeah, like I there'd be like my man, fuck these people man they left me and then just being like all right i got a credit card i got some cash here like he I mean, that's the real thing, thing dude he pulls the blank parents and- money. Yeah, that yeah, is Yeah, he true. stole his parents' money a whole like bro, how much did that room service cost, dog? Dude, how, how much did spent his like dad- five G's? How- you gotta also think in those movies, how much does Kevin McAllister's dad and uh, maybe her- his mom make? Because they're taking their whole family and then aunts, uncles, and their kids on international trips. Like it's so it's said well, they, in the movie uh- the dad's paying for it. Well, they were in Chicago though. So, like, that's where you got, like, all those stock market guys, you know what I mean? So, like, I could see that being a possibility where, but like, you damn, know, he was, like, like a 13 people. big time. God, yeah, I mean, damn. shit, man. 
Bro, like, you ain't seen that show Black AF on um, Netflix yet, bro. On that, this dude, because he got all them shows on all them networks, is just balling out of control. He got, like, the fucking Acura NSX with all of the fucking souped-up shit on it and the motherfucking taking private flights to Tahiti with the crib, with the whole family and shit. So, like, God, I mean, like, if some people got money, dog. That's why I be trying to tell people about them politicians and shit. It's like, fam, it is so much money in America that they can use to bribe a politician that you could not say no to it, dog. They're, everybody got a number, dog. Like, at some point, they're going to hit you with some shit where you're going to be like, all right, go ahead and give me that shit, bro. Just, I, I'll do what y'all want. Fuck it. Like, you could be the most good-hearted person. That's why I don't even trust Bernie Sanders, dog. Like, on some real shit. Because, like, I feel like he followed in the footsteps of everybody, too. At a certain point, like, he gets in line with the rest of the party, you know what I mean? And I guess he kind of has to because he's in the party, you know what I mean? But I just feel like somebody probably has ran up on Bernie Sanders and offered that motherfucker a billion dollars before. Did he take it? Did he not? I don't know. But I, I just feel like they got enough money to do that. You know what I'm saying? Def okay. Bezos can give you a bill and still be rich. You know what I mean? Fucking uh, Jeff, Bill Gates can do the same shit. Jeff, I will do hey, I'll sh- say hey. whatever you want, Jeff. Hell Let me yeah, dog. Let me get Honestly, man, bumper. that's all I've ever really dreamed of <laughs> in terms of, like, a job is that I could just get to a place where, like, I'd be rich or powerful enough to exploit the system where I could just be, like, you know, doing underhand deals and shit where it's just like, oh, yeah, that fell off the back of the truck. You know what I'm saying? I just pocket like 100 Gs. Like, or if you're like a cop and you just find a drug bus, you're all by yourself. And it's just like a bed full of cash. Like, oh, thank you, God. Like, That's I'm why I'm like, home immediately. <clears throat> like in The Wire, that one where they get, they like stuff the bills in there. Uh, they have those big piles of money and they look at each other and they're like, yo, man, like, fuck mm-hmm. this. And they start packing Hell their vests yeah. uh, in. I mean, I don't. If it's a, like drug money, I don't give a fuck. If nobody knows how much money there is, I'd be like, okay, Hell yeah. it's like I'm about to Bro, just did you, um, to large up. If you watch all of the wire, dude, it's really deep. Because if you watch every like cop's progression through the shit, you know what I'm saying? Like you see how they become who they become. Because like, um, like in the final season, like they show how like McNulty becomes kind of like a washout, and then like. Um, Kima becomes like the new McNulty kind of, you know what I'm saying? And then like, mm-hmm. how like the kids become like the new Omar and shit. Well, if you look, the guy, and this is crazy because it goes along with what we're talking about. Herc got fired, like the white dude with the ball head. He got fired out of the force and wound up in a better <clears throat> spot than he would have if he had stayed on the force by being white and having the background and shit. And it just showed you how you would get, you know, elevated and shit if you get, if you pull the right moves and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, because then the other guy, um, uh, what's his name? Colvin. I think that's who it was, the, uh, the other black dude. Who was his homie? Um, Perkins, the ball Carver. Head, you know. Carver. Carver, that's who it was, Carver. Yeah, Coven is the other guy I'm thinking about. But yeah, Carver, um, he becomes like the new um, Daniels. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where he tries to uphold good and shit, but he does so He tries to keep doing good, but no matter what, the department keeps fucking him over. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why that's one of the best shows, man. Like, it really develops all the characters, and it talks about what really goes on in our cities. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, a lot of this brutality shit, that's what The Wire was talking about in fucking in the 90s, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it literally was showing exactly what we're going through right now. And everybody just watched that shit like it was a fantasy. You know what I mean? It's like, no, it's way different. And if you even look at, like, from season one to season two, how they policed the black neighborhoods versus when they went after the white guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of that shit, bro. Like, they talked about all of that shit, man. It's amazing. Well, even, like, um, I just thought that show was cool because not only did you uh, – they had, like, some of the best characters ever – created for a drama but <laughs> just the way that it examined the that whole city from all the perspectives that you could like with crime you know like the criminals the cops the upper echelon the like the politics the addicts the news mm-hmm. all that shit yeah. the, the educational system all of it oh yeah fucking crazy dude just like um and yeah, what you know it really show showed too was that at a failing of any one of those at any level, then all of them fell apart. You and also like it showed you station, how they, oh yeah. they weren't connected. Like you could do whatever you want. It's like, it's like uh, what's his face? The guy that made the, the, the no fly zone or whatever, the, when he made the... Oh yeah, yeah, the uh, hamster damn shit. Yeah, like he literally did that, but nobody knew about it except a specific set of people. But it's like even that shit... Well, no, because then he, uh, remember, he actually had to, uh, he did, like the, the news found out about it. One guy caught him and then he uh, bribed him. He was like, I'm gonna give you the story later. Just give me a, give me some time, you yeah. know what I mean? Because like, it showed you how they were all linked where it was like, 
if the news not reported how they supposed to, then shit got out of hand. Or if like the mayor ain't holding down one thing or he cut money here, then, you know, people got shot over there and shit. Like that's really what be happening, dog. Like, you know, we sacrifice certain parts of our city for others. You know what I mean? And like, that's kind of what everybody is getting at and shit. But like with me, I just think the sad part of it all is just that like, they didn't want to just say, okay, if nothing else, if, if shit can't be fair financially, at least let it be fair judicially. You know what I'm saying? Let it be that, like, as a black man, I can get a fair day in court. You know what I'm saying? But, like, they'll kill you in the streets before you even go to fucking jail. You know what I mean? Like, that's the shit that's so scary about it all, man. Like, I don't know. Who's, just your, wild, who's your favorite character on The Wire? One character. Uh, I mean, n- fucking nasty uh, nutty. Is probably one of my is, but he's like the star. So if I was gonna say not one of the stars, not multi, one of the stars, not one of the okay. main, like you know, yeah. you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, not not him, but I would say if not him, then uh, fucking she. Oh damn, <laughs> Clay Davis. Clay Davis. Clay Davis is, is the most slimiest Black motherfucker Claire, on that dude? shit. Black Rick Bro, Claire? the most slimiest ball of them all, and he just like getting drug money straight to his office, like. Counting that shit up, laughing and shit, and then he goes to court and just walks free, yeah. like the greatest man just, ever. He did that show showed how politicians can be so greasy that they can get out of anything. Where he's like, uh, "This is disgusting. This is disgusting." And then they're like, "But we have you on tape." And he's like, uh, "Look here, now." Like he just like switches back and forth and stuff. Right. I mean, but that guy is the greatest classic. scene. That guy's greatest scene is uh when they have him do the deposition. Like, they hand him, like, a receipt, and he takes it from them. But, like, he barely touches Like, he, like, grabs the corner, and he puts his glasses on, and he looks at it like... And then he just puts <laughs> it down, and he says, I came here to, to help you guys in any way I can, but y'all is out for blood. And then he just <laughs> walks out. <laughs> I was like, that was the smoothest move, because, bro, they can't lock you up if you don't confess to this shit. And he ain't say nothing. He saw that shit and said, oh, this is a trap, and yep. just left. <laughs> I was like, this dude smooth as hell, bro. They gonna come talk to me about money laundering in West Baltimore? Shit. Shit, boy. Shit. Shit. Slimy motherfucker. I love it. Uh, he was, How okay. about you, though? That's a great one. My favorite, I just because every scene was either, like, intense or he was just, like, a cool character. But I liked Weebay. I thought he was, to me... <laughs> If you like just focusing on the gang, uh, Avon Barksdale's gang, a guy who is so committed to a gang that not only will he do all the dirt, but when it comes down to it and you got to have a fall guy, he's like, I'm going to take all of them. I'm going to take every charge you got as long as you give me some good ass food. Because anything you leave out is outside the deal. They learn about it later. They can charge you later. Fuck it then. For another piss sandwich and some tater salad, I'll go a few more. You want that? Medium rail out of horseradish. I'll tell right. you what you want. And then on top of it, what I loved about that guy is there's a one scene in particular where you think he's going to kill Avon's uh, nephew. Yeah, yeah. And you're yeah. like, oh, shit. Like, and then he takes him down into this dark area, and the guy's like, man, what the fuck are we doing? You're like, oh, shit, he's about to get capped. And he turns on the lights. He's like, yo, man, I'm going to need you to take care of my fish and shit while I'm gone. And he's just like a guy that's just a nerd about fucking fish in a tank and shit. It was yeah, so man. funny, dude. Nah, he, he's a good <sighs> character for sure, too, man. He's just like um... a, one of those funny gangster guys. I just love... That's why I love movies like State Property, where it's not like a great movie, but there's always characters in movies like that where it's like, that's a classic character. Maybe not so much in State Property, but... They don't even make movies like that anymore. I'm telling you, like, if you look at movies nowadays, the plot is so weak, man. Like, you can laugh at State Property, but the plot in State Property is actually kind of deep, man. Like, they blow up, you know what I'm saying? All, watching all that shit was exciting and shit. And then they get yep. betrayed by a dirty homeboy, which is, you know, kind of what will happen anyways. It's kind of like fucking uh, some Shakespeare shit. You know what I'm saying? Where like, you know, the sin, your sins come back on you because you ain't treating everybody right. Shit like legit. I, I ain't trying to say it was literarily like Shakespeare. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> plot, plot wise, that's kind of like some Othello, you know what I'm saying? Dude, shit, they man. kidnap his wife and friend and kill the bitch. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. And on top of it, everything we're describing, the characters playing the parts, 
are rappers of our <laughs> era. Like, it's not, it's not some guy you don't know. It's like, oh, that's an Andy Siegel and Memphis Bleak. Even fucking Jay Z's in the shit. This is the story of a hustler named Beans. Yo, we got to talk about some business. Who built his empire. So you got to make it where it ain't no competition. By any means. I was going to say, you know the best part about all of those movies is that you can tell that there's always a scene where either Dame or Jay, because they're financing the whole movie, oh, yeah. we're like, okay, so this is my scene where I just get to be like a boss. <laughs> Don't you remember the one scene? Uh, I think it's like Dame is in the car and he's just like, yeah, like speaking to some other language, like, yeah, yeah, fit it out when that shit with that. No. Like, that's that's Jay Z, dude. That's yeah. Jay Z. That's his only yeah. part. He's like some yeah. head assassin, but he all he does is spit gibberish out, and then that's it. Yeah, bro. That's my sister's name, right? Yeah. Yeah, no. You usually shit meals like that go with Nick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know I got you. Quiet though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Later. In right, a it's Ferrari just like, or some shit. Right. It was just like we just gotta let everybody know we get money over here, and I'm just gonna leave. You know what I'm saying? That's all. <laughs> and then <laughs> just so y'all know. Dame Dash's scene, and this is a questionable scene too, and I'll get into that in a second. But his flex scene in that movie, among other ones, there's a few, but there's one in particular where he's just in a hot tub with like bubbles with like two hotties, <laughs> and he's just like kind of getting in the mix. But what is so weird about the scene is that DJ Clue is also, like, he's not in the tub. He's, like, on, he's, like, leaning on the edge of the tub, looking hey, at man. them do all this. And my, not only are they going over business, which I get, but then they have to play fucking DJ Clue at the end of the scene because he's like, yo, man, can I get a little... Uh, let me get a little taste of that. Or He says something like that. And DJ... Uh, Dame Dash is like, nah, you gonna have to give me a little. T like they just like play. <laughs> they play DJ Clue so oh, hard in that shit. It's like that scene in that movie The Wash with uh, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, where oh yeah, reason, where he's like they beating just, his meat, <laughs> just listening to Snoop have sex outside of like a door, and he just starts like touching himself. It's like man, he was just horny, man. But you don't yeah, know like that. <laughs> hey, man, you know, they could have alluded to it. I agree. It was a little suspect. And I feel like as Dr. Dre, I would have been like, hey, man, what the fuck? Who wrote this, yeah. man? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I get you want to act. So you're like, you can't be, you're like the straight man. So you're going to look a little nerdy, but you don't got to have them look like, have you grabbing your jock and shit, look, playing hey, with man. yourself. I mean, come on. I feel like maybe he didn't, uh, I feel like maybe he didn't think it was that big a deal, man. Maybe it just is what it is. Maybe Dr. Dre is just strong in his sexuality like that where, you know, he doesn't so. have to worry about that shit. You know what I mean? But who, I mean, I, me personally, I'd have been like, man, hold up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like, they put it together, they, up. they show it to you. I'd be like, come on, man. You got to, like, cut five seconds off this clip where I'm not grabbing <laughs> myself. Like, maybe he listens to the, the shit and he's like, Oh, oh yeah, like you know, just giving props to Snoop for smashing, but he doesn't have to fucking be there. Like, oh, like <laughs> that's weird. A lot of weird hey, shit. Maybe the director oh. just was like pissed. Like, man, fuck Dr. Dre, man. Fucking <laughs> said something. To me. I mean, uh, I don't know, man. It's just funny, man. All the movies rappers used to be, and they don't, like I said, they don't even do that anymore now, man. Like. I can't even really think of the last movie I saw with a rapper in it. I guess, like, does Ice Cube's son count as playing Ice Cube in N.W.A.? <laughs> like, that guy's an actor, I don't know. You know yeah, he's, he's not really actor. a rapper either. Rapper. Yeah. I've I mean, seen not, him rap before, but he's not a rapper, though, yeah. My thing is, maybe that's, our, maybe that's a window that we should just bring out again. Like, that could be our thing. <laughs> We just yeah, because of the virus, uh, ain't no rappers gonna have no money, dog. Ain't no rapper gonna have no money to put up the shoot his own movie well, no more. You know what I mean? Get somebody like, got some bread, like you know, hit up who's like somebody below, like three steps below. See, this is my this is my genius plan young for any Buck. of that hip hop shit. This is what you do. Definitely not young Buck. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I would tell you to do: is you find out who do got the bag like that. Like for example, like I know Swiss Beats. I saw. Instagram video of him just like roller skating on marble floors in his house past giant statues and shit. Okay. So like 
apparently Swiss Beats got the bag. So you just go to Swiss Beats and be like, man, we want to shoot the Swiss Beats story. You know what I'm saying? And you just write like this hard gangster ass script that fits every rapper's life where it's like, you know, Swiss Beats was a young man in the hoods of New Jersey when, you know, one day he found you the beat machine. You just take every like black, <laughs> like Jews paid in full. Yeah, like, exactly. You're just like, okay, this is, we're going to take this, this, and this from right, these right. movies. <laughs> Right. You're going to get shot like, in the head in the middle of this and come back and actually take over. But that's your story. Right. And then you're going to make a beat so hot that your boy yeah. starts hating on you for it. And y'all get in a fight on the roof and he falls off the roof. And then somebody says, oh, you got the juice now, dog. Like, you got the beats now, back. Swiss. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's saying? it, dude. You got the beats now. And that's where and that's where I got the name, Swiss Beats, right? So, <laughs> see what I mean? Some other guys, like, behind that guy, like, you Swiss Beats now. Oh, no. oh man! So you know what I mean? Just like, just hype him up the whole movie to where it's like anybody that hears this that with any type of ego is like, I have to do this. Oh yeah! Like, How much is this gonna cost? Oh, two hundred mil. Yeah. <laughs> oh, two hundred mil. We're gonna like, need a mil like, just to get it started, but you know, hell yeah, that's hell mostly yeah. for us. That's like our retainer, and I'm gonna give you a right. bill at the end. I mean, it's, that's just for the script. You know what I mean? Because you know. <laughs> This shit just doesn't write itself. You know what I mean? Like, this is fire right here. But you, you heard tailor it. it. You tailor it to each rapper. We'll hit Wiz. That's what I mean. We'll be like, what I mean. it's Cheech and Chong, but you got a gun also. You know, right. we'll add hit up 50. Yeah. Be like, look, 50. I mean, like, you already had, had your movie, hated. but check this out. This the sequel, dog. Yeah. You got to keep on wanting more. You ain't just see Fast and Furious 1, did you? Yeah. You saw Tokyo Drift, motherfucker? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just get him hyped, dog. Boy, That's the thing, man. Lloyd Banks you need to get in the room. Be your, your, he's going to fucking take over, and then you got to come back and take him over again. <laughs> oh, man. I always wanted to uh, just get on Shark Tank one time, bro. Because I get on Shark Tank, I'm going to sell something. It might not be what I came on there to sell. It might be some ass. <laughs> right. <laughs> but at some point, I'm going to get a check, dog. Like, I'm going to be like, look, Lori, all I'm saying is, I know you got the bag, and all I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to make some money, too. I got that ambition, girl. <laughs> Me just saying anything where they'd be like, we don't like your product, but we like you. <laughs> so I'd be like, oh. I'm yo, selling my guess what, sperm. Guess what else I got? Right. I'm like, guess what else I got? <laughs> exactly. I'd be like, I'm like uh, Dane, bro. Like, what's the dude? Uh, Dem- Damon, you bald as fuck, man. I got a full head of hair. I can <laughs> it to you right now, dog. But all I need, 15%. What's up, man? Holla at your boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd be in there selling everything until I got some type of deal on Shark Tank. Fuck that. I'm going to get something, dog. Mr. <laughs> wonderful, man. I can make you feel wonderful, goddammit. Like, oh, what's God. up, bro? <laughs> that would be hilarious on Shark Tank if that's what they're like. Uh, there's like one guy left. He's like, look, hmm. man, I will suck your dick if you give me this deal. <laughs> like, they're like, oh, well. This shit got to work, man. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, well, uh, Cut, cut, real quick. Holler us over here off camera <laughs> one time. We gonna come back talk. and he's like, "Look, I'm gonna give you. A, I'm, <laughs> you got the deal, okay?" It's like all I gotta say is, no orcs of of mine has ever been so clean in all my life, and uh, you, sir, can sell anything. <laughs> I guess you are the greatest human bidet that we've ever seen. So I've only oh, seen God. one, and you've done a great job. So. Oh, man. I mean, honestly, though, man, like, uh, I, I brought this up to people before. Like, Shark Tank is actually kind of fucked up. Because, like, if you think about what the American dream is, basically, you work hard as fuck on it to get to Shark Tank and then, like, find a product that's kind of selling and shit. Because they're not going to buy your shit if it ain't got no yeah. sales and shit. You know what I'm saying? That's like, why they, they want numbers. That when that's why you got to right. bring that shit. Right. But then, like, if you are doing that, if you had the time and the patience and, like, the, the actual wit to do it, you should just keep doing what you was doing and make lesser money yourself and then use that money to do more shit. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what all of them did. You know what I'm saying? Like, that chick, like, Barb or whatever, like, she was a real estate chick, but then she got an investment so that she could expand her portfolio. You know what I mean? Like, they ain't just do one thing. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if you were really smart on Shark Tank, you wouldn't sell your shit. Or if you did, you wouldn't sell it for cheap. You would be like, nah. All that. I need all. Like, yeah, you can get fifty percent. I need a hundred mil, damn motherfucker. Like, right now. But I now, think like, it's like, but it wouldn't work though. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you get to that level, it's like people that are so exhausted, and they right. usually have like a specific problem. Whether it's like they can't afford to get re up on inventory or something, so right. they've either hit a breaking point where they have to go next level, or they just are so overwhelmed with where they're at that they need like some advice. So my, well, you know what it is. 
I think the uh, the barrier to entry starts getting so high because like when you try to start mass producing shit for like Walmart and shit, you got to like talk to China and it's like, well, we can give you a deal on the orders, but you got to order 300 million. You know what I'm saying? And where before <laughs> you was only ordering like 300,000. You know what I'm saying? So now like, it's well, like, and it's shit, also I'm like ready for that. Yeah. Somebody was actually talking about this on uh, Joe Rogan. I think it was uh, the, somebody from The Sopranos, but he was talking about how they – he had some like spaghetti sauce that he was like marketing and he actually sold in whole foods, but he's like, what you don't realize is there's a cost to do business with these big companies that no one, you never even think like, uh, it's always the main shit you think of. Like, this is what it's going to cost for me to mass produce this. And this is what it's going to cost for me to ship this. But then when you go to like Walmart or whole foods, they're like, well, it's going to cost you this much for us to put your shit here. But if you want it here, it's more. And if you want it this much, it's this. And if you want it displayed this way with signage, it's this. And he's like, that's where you start getting fucked up. And I think that when you hear them talk about like knowing the that area or having relationships in that, you know, those areas, I think people go on Shark Tank for that specifically because a lot of it's oh, yeah. like a specific product. So to get it on a Walmart end cap so that you walk by it everywhere all the time. Right. That probably means you going from two million in sales a year to thirty million sales a year just right. because of that one thing, you know. I mean, don't get me <clears> wrong, you would bro. never know about that. And then also, oh, yeah. it's just like the idea that you could go on a show, and even if you don't get a deal, you will instantly get more sales, attention. Yeah, attention you know? from it. Yeah. So Definitely. no matter what, you're gonna win. It's just if you get some people get on there, and you know. It's like that sham or uh, those uh, sponges with smiley faces or some dumb shit like that, where it's like you can't even believe that somebody is making money off this, but it's right. such a dumb product that unfortunately I guess everybody needs that they it just ends up being like a billion dollar business. It's crazy. Well, I mean, like legitimately, man, like uh, you you don't never know what somebody will buy nowadays. You know what I mean? Like that's the thing that's so crazy about it, man. Like, I was actually thinking about some crazy shit, too, in terms of just, like, investments and financing and business and all of that shit. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I I keep trying to figure out, like, stocks and shit, you know what I'm saying, and all that. And what I keep realizing is that, like, how we were saying, like, with the barrier to entry, like, with Shark Tank and shit, it's the same way with, like, the stocks, man. Like, you have to have so much money to really even, like, do that shit successfully, you know what I mean? Where it's just, like it's almost out of control dog like it's it's literally you like, like a grand at least to even try to even make a sort of investment that's meaningful to me i mean but i don't even see how that would work because like the way that i see that you're supposed to do it is you have to kind of like spread your portfolio you know across a lot of different things but a thousand is probably how much you would only put in one business you know what i mean like you really need like 10 g's like because you need like it's this thing called the rule of like 10 percent where you only risk 10 percent of your wealth to gain more wealth, you know what I'm saying? So like 10% is a hundred thousand dollars of, you know what I'm saying? 10,000 dollars is a 10% of a hundred thousand. So yeah. you need at least 10 G's in order to even really get in there because like you need to buy a thousand dollars of like airplane stock then like, and not just in one company. Then you got to get like, you know, a thousand dollars in oil, then a thousand dollars in gold, a thousand dollars in this, you know what I mean? Like if you want to spread it out and like I'm saying, like the average person can't even risk 10 G's, you know what I mean? Like who has a hundred thousand dollars to be doing that shit? Because I saw this shit, um, you know, people that, that at Robinhood and shit, where, like, you can invest stocks and shit. I saw a whole bunch of news articles come out recently where all those people got took. Well, that's fantastic. A really smart decision, young man. We can put that check in a money market mutual fund. Then we'll reinvest the earnings into foreign currency accounts with compounding interest, and it's gone. Because they thought, you know, because the virus knocked everything down low, they could buy it quick, and then it would pop back up, and they would make money. But most of them businesses that went down went under. So now yeah. people are out of mad money. And they said some kid, like, I don't even know if he lost this all or what, or he just, like, said they said he owed it or whatever. But somehow he owed $750,000 because of this stock thing that he did. So he killed himself. Yeah, like, some crazy shit, dog. So, like, I don't know, man. It's just, like, that whole American, like, dream and shit. Like, I think that, like, our generation got to really realize. I, I was telling you I want to talk about maybe, like, the future and shit. Just, like what would you think the world would look like five years from now? You know what I'm saying? And like, I think one of the things we got to realize is, is that the way of doing business of the past isn't going to exist anymore. And then also like 
a lot of the things that we put value in ain't really worth nothing either, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I don't know, man. Like, even, like, Instagram and, like, YouTube and shit, like, it used to be that, like, people was getting paid off of that shit, you know what I mean? But they've changed all the rules now to where, like, that dude Young Pharaoh, he was talking about it. He was saying, like, literally, like, he has, a, he has videos that, like, have less views that made more money because of how it used to be and now that they restructured the deals in youtube he has videos that have like two million views is giving him like 150 dollars. you know what i'm saying like a viral video they gave him no money because they what they did was they made it so they took the ad money off of it you know how it used to be that you would just click on the video and it always have a commercial in it like his don't have that because the ad people they don't um because he has like cussing or whatever yeah. in it, you know they don't put the ads in it, you know what I'm saying? Because he doesn't put his content in it anymore. And the reason why they did that was because I think some kid, I forgot who it was, either killed, shot up a school or something, but he was making videos on YouTube and they found out that they were putting the ads in the videos and the ad people were like, we don't want our videos, you know, like a commercial shown in a video talking about this and that, you know what I mean? Which makes sense, you know what I mean? Like you wouldn't want to fucking be Clorox and find out that, you know, your fucking shit's getting put in a bunch of fucking like uh child porn videos or some crazy shit you know what i mean so like i understand why you youtube did it but it really fucked everybody so now you can't even do that you know what i'm saying like it used to be our generation was kind of getting money on the internet now it's like that's just kind of out the window now too i think really what's going on you got to go back to like the old old ass ways of like getting resources and shit dog like how much food can you grow and like how much water can you purify and shit like that and like start selling that shit because i think it might actually get to a point dog where like it sounds bad man but i don't know man it might start really being some warfare out here in these streets bro where it's like we might really be fighting the government dog like i hope not but i mean you can't fight a war without resources you know what i'm saying and it's just legit to the point now where i'm looking at it where it's like how can you sell a smiley face sponge when like you know what i'm saying when it's like or like a fucking song or some shit like that that you made when it's like literally like people shooting AKs out in the streets, you know what I mean? Like, that's why it's not, like, a lot of fucking, like, you know, uh, people wearing Nikes in the Middle East and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Because they worrying about bombs dropping on their head, you know what I mean? Like, or some real type of shit. Right. Like, they not, it ain't a whole lot of fucking Palestinian rappers, dog, you know what I mean? Or, like, fucking artists and shit, because they dealing with real shit. And I think that's what America might start getting to, bro. Like, sad as it is to say, but you keep looking at all of the signs, I don't know, bro, shit getting crazy out here, bro. <clears throat> I mean, it just is crazy. I, I really, like, when you said this earlier about just thinking about five years in the future, it's, it almost seems, like, impossible right now. Like, before yeah. this started, I might have been able to tell you something or at least, like, something I wish for. But right now, it's, like, month to month. Many unknowns. It's like that. And, like, five years, it's like, damn. I don't really know. I really economically, I don't know where we're going to be at. I hope this shit doesn't keep going and kind of keep deteriorating the way it is. But it seems like, um, you know, we've talked about how fucked up all these systems are that we've used to uh, run shit in general. And it, this might just be the time where all those things sort of fall apart and, Hopefully, if that is the case, like maybe five years in the future, we're starting to get back to something where we see we've maybe improved some of these things to the point that it works for modern society and we're not running off fucking colonial laws and shit like that. I don't know. Um, I think I that's really optimistic, man. Because, like, the thing about it is that, I mean, I feel you, but the thing about it is, is that nothing dies quickly. You know what I'm saying? Like, all those institutions, you realize they would still fight to have some vestige of themselves. You know what I mean? Like, it's like if you were going to create like a competing, you know, soda brand or something with Coke and Coke starts going under because your shit's so good. Coke would start, you know, making super Coke and, you know, all these other things to try to keep, stay alive as, as they die. You know what I mean? Even though the writing's on the wall. And I think that's kind of for five years what's going to be happening is, is like, we're going to be in the death cycle of it where it's really kind of like, starting to be evident that it's going out and then hopefully 10 years we can start redoing some rebuilding and shit and i know that sounds crazy you know what i'm saying and i don't want to be you know sounding like no debbie downer and shit you know what i mean but i'm just trying to be realistic about what i'm seeing because the thing about it is, is that the way you can tell the future is by looking at the past you know what i'm saying so like yeah. if you were to look at anything in history dog like the roman empire fucking you know the african empires the chinese dynasties at some point, all of them hit a hit a terminal point where shit falls apart. 
And what you, people don't really understand is that the shit already happened. The shit happened in 2008. You know what I'm saying? And actually, the shit already happened again because it happened in the 1920s. And it happened in the 70s with the oil embargo. You see what I'm saying? Like, all these multiple different times where, like, literally, like, society as we know it pretty much put got put on a hold. You know what I mean? Because, like, in the 70s, uh, it was a point where nobody had a fucking job. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it was, yeah. like, the oil embargoes was going on with the OPEC and all of that shit. And there was, like, the terrorist groups at the Olympics and all that shit. And, like, literally, like, put a stop on shit. That's why, like, we have x-ray machines at airports now because some people fucking hijacked a plane and then they started scanning everybody's bags after that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I think it was, like, Libyan uh, Afri- uh, terrorists or some shit. I can't remember who it yeah. was at the time. But it was. I you think know it what was mean? Libyan. Yeah. And then don't you remember at the Olympics, there was an attack, I think, when it was somewhere in the Middle East, too, where uh, some people got killed at the Olympics games and shit. Like, I think was, those like, were Iranian terrorists or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like, people forget about these things, dude. And, like, then they don't realize that the reason why those things were happening is still going on. You know what I'm saying? So that's mm-hmm. why, like, I don't know. I kind of think we kind of hit the terminal thing where because knowledge is so available and people, like, got the internet now and can look these things up and know about it. Because, like, even me saying this to people, it's people that still don't know about this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but as they start learning, because that's, that's what I kind of think is going on with the racism shit. I think that, like, all that information has been out for a long ass time of like how black people were getting mistreated and shit. People just kept cho- choosing not to look at it. And like even black people didn't want to look at it. So now that a lot of black people looked at it, they started waking up and now it's starting to get to a point where you put two and two together where it's like, well, damn, if it's always been like this and it's still going on, it's not going to change unless I do something about it. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what everybody's getting that that vibe you know what i'm saying where yeah. it's like about to be kind of like an uprising type shit and i hate even saying that dog because like it sound like i'm talking gloom and doom and i'm not that type of person you know what i mean but what else could there be you know what i mean like this is like some french revolution era type shit dog where it's like let them eat cake type shit to this point where it's literally the rich are so rich dog and the poor are only getting poor because of all of this shit going on you know what i mean like what's I gonna mean, happen you know what i'm saying and when it's like that kind of it's that's the again we've like said this even just in us recording these conversations and definitely when we're not recording but like it's a there's the race thing going on that everyone's waking right. up to and there's the class thing that is going on that everyone's waking mm-hmm. up to and for the race thing it's like the thing that i'm getting really irritated in hearing is anybody that's like, for example, I listened to uh, uh, Fighter and the Kid with uh, Brian Cowan and uh, Brendan mm-hmm. Shachit. Yeah. I mean, I love Brian Cowan. That guy is smart, funny. He's definitely a well-read dude and experienced. You know, he grew up outside of the United States. Dude, just hear, like, the thing about the race thing that I think everyone needs to acknowledge is it definitely has to be everyone working together because, I mean, white people are the one that created this shit or keeping it going black people are the one getting fucked over the most and the, the attention's on and everyone needs to work together but i don't need to hear some old white guy tell me like some shit about the socioeconomic plight of black people like and he was like saying like oh somebody that says that's never been to the hood and shit it's like what are you talking about dude like stop talking about this shit from such a dumb like it's just like i don't know i'm not educated in it and i don't really like to like talk about it too much because no one wants to hear my opinion. I'm not the person yeah. for that. I understand it. I'm married to a black woman. I'm friends with you. I'm friends with the black people and stuff. But this ain't like my thing is shutting the fuck up, hearing people that the like, thing, have the perspective I don't have. And the only thing I can say as far as getting better, I definitely want to be a part of it. White people need to be a part of it. But black people need to take command and just like, ex- like, because white people have no, um, point of view on it like even me like right. i'm friends with you you educate me on stuff my wife educates me on stuff but there was a story i just read uh, about that girl who went to a party with a bunch of white chicks she was one black chick a bunch of white chicks i think it was somewhere in the south and then it was in texas it was a sleepover and then somehow some guys came over too and then in the morning this black chick's dead on the ground outside beaten to death and nobody gets charged. And like, wh- this is where I cringe as a, myself. When I'm looking at that and I'm like, damn, like that's so crazy. I can't believe that's happening. But there's a lot of people, like I'm, sh- I'm sure you included, that are black that are like, 
I'm not surprised because it happened so goddamn much. But even yeah. me, it's like I don't have enough perspective. Even that seems crazy to me. It's like that shouldn't be happening. But it's like I should know it's happening because it is. Happening. Well, here's what I would say though. Um, you saying that like you don't want to hear from them people, but I feel like to an extent we do kind of need to hear from everybody because. I mean, if you got some dumb shit to say, you got to realize that your shit is insensitive. So, like, first and foremost, before we hear from anybody, I think everyone needs to educate themselves. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, that's part of the problem with everything in America. It's like, everybody jumps off with an opinion real quick without even, like, basing it off of some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. even we do that sometimes. But, like, I mean, I just feel like me and you are a little bit smart motherfuckers to where, like, how I even just rattled off all those, like, terrorist events from the past and shit. Like I said, most people can't even do that. But then they'll sit there and be like, you know, 9-11, blah, 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 and all want to stand up for the flag and shit. It's like, you don't even know the history of all this shit. Like, I know the history, and I'm telling you that that's the wrong idea. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, like, but in terms of, like, hearing from people, I think, like I said, number one, everybody needs to try to educate themselves just out of being a common good person. That's what you should do first on any topic. Before you, you know, if somebody tell you sea turtles is dying and shit, that you need to go and educate yourself about sea turtles first before you just jump out there and be like, say the turtles, because maybe they dying because of some other shit, or maybe it's your fault that they dying. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But you don't even know that. You know what I mean? And you're out there saying save them, but you ain't doing nothing to change your ways. So, like, that's kind of what's going on with racism, where it's like, I do want to hear from those people because I want you to, I want to hear how uneducated you are on the topic so that I could fill you in. You know what I'm saying? Because I think once people get the information, they might be more open to it and learning from it or, like, sympathizing with it and shit. But also, you have to hear from them because you're challenging them. You know what I'm saying? Like, if yeah, I'm telling you that true. the white person, yeah, I'm telling you the white person is the cause of all the ills, you can't sit back and point the finger and can't get it pointed back at you. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, to a degree, like, I, I blame a lot of black people because we, uh, we've seen the writing on the wall since day one, and at some point, I think we gave up on the fight. I don't think it was necessarily all us because what I think what really happened was that crack, um, which was given to us from the CIA and shit, kind of did a lot of quilling, a lot of the uprising that was going on in the 90s because, like, that all kind of happened at, like right around that Rodney King era and shit. And like, if you remember a lot of the rappers, it was like Public Enemy and like Queen Latifah and like even like LL Cool J and shit would have like woke songs back then in the 90s. And then like for some reason, all that shit went away because we let them commercialize everything. Big business took over, you know what I'm saying? To the point where it was like, well, fuck, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got to get this bag because it's really the haves and the have nots, like we were talking about before. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it's really a classism thing. So, I'm cool with hearing people speak on it. You know what I'm saying? Even if you got some uneducated shit to say, go ahead and put your opinions out there because at the end of the day, it's going to show us what needs to get worked on. You know what I'm saying? Cause like a lot of times I feel like people will even stand on things to say things where it's like, uh, you know, they call it the microaggression shits and you know what I'm saying? And it's like, they, those people think they're really giving people compliments, I think. And it's like, no, you're actually bringing up a lot of crazy shit. Like, you know, you'll say like people say to me all the time, like, Oh, you mixed with something. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I couldn't even tell you what I mixed with. If I told you my family's bloodline, it's so convoluted because of slavery that it's really fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, oh, my yeah. great-grandma was a fucking pure-blooded Native American that, you know, was uh, captured and shit, put into slavery. So then my grandfather was a part, was a slave great-grandfather. You know what I'm saying? This is all in West Virginia, you know what I'm saying? And then on my mom's side, her dad is, like, half white or whatever, and supposedly that was the product of you know, some type of assault as well, you know what I mean, or not and shit. So, I mean, it's a whole lot of shit that goes on in my family history where it's like, I look like this because of what's going on. But you want to sit here and say, I look handsome or whatever because I'm not a dark-skinned black person. That's really what you're saying, you know what I mean? So, like, even shit like that. But it's like, once you get to the bottom of that, maybe that's how we could hopefully find some reform and shit. But even the people that, like, or, you know, I mean, like, it's people that say dumbass shit, like, get over slavery. You know what I'm saying? But then he's the same person with a Confederate flag. And it's like, well, then get over slavery, motherfucker. Like, y'all yeah, right. lost. You know what I mean? Like, it's the same shit. You know what I mean? Like, That's what I don't get about. Can, we were yeah. talking about Confederate flag. It's like, why you want to fucking uh, jump on a losing team's bandwagon? Like, bottom line, even if it wasn't all the bullshit, it's like, you just look dumb as fuck. You're just, like, stuck in the past. How many, uh, and what's crazy many is if you do go to Virginia, those or, like, a southern state like that, there's people there that will fucking, they will talk about that shit. And they, it's not yeah. even the flag. They'll be like, yeah, well, you know, the war and shit. And like, this, that's when this and that. And it's like, 
You're talking about the Civil War, dude. Like, you ain't, right. you don't know shit. They call it the, you, uh, the you war got but one aggression. tooth in your mouth, and you talking yeah. about this. Educate some well, fucking toothpaste into that shit. But the only reason why I was saying that whole, like, we do need to hear from those people is because that's the only thing that would possibly stop there being a crazy-ass uprising. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe it would start it because I think everybody would realize we're all on the same side getting played by the ones up top on the real top. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the thing, like, they'll have me, you know, me and you down here fighting because you white and I'm black. And it's like, at the end of the day, me and you making the same amount of money living the same life where our four walls don't got no pools outside of them and fucking, you know, vistas and views like goddamn Bill Gates and Mark Cuban and all the motherfuckers. I'm sure they do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure they they don't know what it's like to lay on a hard-ass bed, you know, sleeping on futons and shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's <laughs> some real shit because it's like people wanted to talk about the disparity. There was a lot of economic disparity between races before this, and there still is, obviously. But, like, there's a lot of – there's just a lot of people, like, a giant percentage of the population of the world that just don't got shit. White, right. black, or anything. You and me – like, whether or not, whatever we came from, you and I as adults, like, economically, I have never had a goddamn thing in my life as an adult, other than just, like, a little bit of help from my family. But, like, me, myself, I've had to fucking scramble for rent for most of my 20s, 30s, like, and just now I'm, like, seeing some sort of improvement on that a little bit, but it's, like, compared to somebody that actually has some shit, I'm... I'm broke. Like you take somebody that's living that lifestyle that you were saying and put them in my apartment, living my life as good as I think it is. And they think it is some trash because they have so much shit. And there's well, just no way I feel like is, there's no way to get out of that for a lot of people. There just isn't, they don't have, a, they've been yeah. fucked by all those other things that fuck people like the education system where, yeah. I mean like people saying, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and shit. And, like, get out, like, stop complaining, like, all that bullshit that old heads like to say. And, uh, you, you know, maybe for some people that's possible because they were educated. But there's some people that didn't even get that shit because they were in think some about this, bro. Let me ask you this. How much money would you think in your mind, uh, bank number-wise, where you would be like, oh, I'm cool now? You know what I'm saying? Like, how much money like would you say? Like a salary? I mean, I'm not even, no, I'm saying not even a salary, like, in your bank account number-wise, where, like, you would just be, like, like, you already got a job, and, like, you've been saving, how high does your savings need to get to where you would be, like, oh, I'm cool now, you know what I'm saying, where you would be feeling kind of, like, you know, stress is off of you a little bit, how much money do you think that is, what's the number? I mean, if I didn't have all the shit hanging over my head, I'd say what I'm making now because I don't have any economic, I don't have to worry about anything, but I still have student loans and shit. So if we're talking about getting all that paid off and have money. Yeah, like, I'm like, yeah, like you already cool and you got money in the bank and you're saving. So like now from that point on, you're just going to keep working your job and then add into your savings and live in the rest of your lifetime. But how much money do you think that number would be for you? Oh, I mean, I mean, I would like it to be like a hundred and some in the bank, but it ain't going to be that. So I'd say like, if well, I check this though, 25 K in the bank. Okay. But now check this. You said a hundred though. First, yeah, check this. Me. That sounds like good. That sounds good. And that's like most people, a hundred is broke as fuck. In America, oh yeah. Money, dog. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's broke as fuck. Like, that's what people don't realize. Like, that's, that's like you fathoming, like, the best situation in your mind, your dream type of shit, and it's all, only 100. You're, in the eyes of big business, you are poor as fuck, dude. You, that money is nothing. A bank will throw $100,000 at anybody with a good credit line, you know what I'm saying, and let yeah. you blow that shit up. Like, because I've seen, like, on, what's it, uh, Chef Ramsey shit, like, Kitchen Nightmares and shit, some of the restaurants be, like, $2 million in debt. You see what I'm yeah. saying? And they still be operating because the bank keep giving them money because it's like, oh, okay, they, they credit still good enough to where we can keep throwing that shit out there. We can, because what they're going to do is they're going to sell the property, take all of the shit out of it, sell all the ovens and shit so that they can recoup that two mil. That's all they really looking at. You know what I mean? They don't care if you succeed or not. So that's you. Now I would say really realistically, that number probably need to be like 800,000. Cause like, this is what I'm getting at. Is like, we talk about those systems and shit. The real American dream is that you got, Money in a 401k for retirement. So to retire and never have to work again, you need about a mil. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's probably not going to be realistic. So let's say 800,000 because the way, other way you got to get to your retirement is you need money to invest. So you need that 100,000 I was talking about so that you can risk the 10%, but you need to do that multiple times. So you probably need to risk about three, 400,000 in the markets 
so that when the shit moves up and down, you can actually capitalize on the growth. You know what I'm saying? Because like shit only will move a couple of cents. So you to, for you to prop it off a couple of cents, you got to multiply by hundreds. You know what I'm saying? So like you know, 10,000 investment, one stock might go from, you know, 150 to 170. That's a big gain. You know what I'm saying? Each stock will be $20. So for you to pocket $20 though, you need about a thousand of those stocks so that it's a thousand times 20 yeah, to really make yeah. money. You see what I'm saying? So like, that's what I mean. Like our minds aren't even set up right to where we can even thrive in the system that exists because the system is fucked up, bro. Like you and me, I'm the same way. If I had 100 G's, bro, and all my bills was paid and I just was getting money so that I could keep adding to my shit, how big do I need to fucking dream at that point? I don't want to fucking boat in the island and shit. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what's really crazy about it. They got enough money to give everybody that dream right now. I'm not saying do it or nothing because, like, yeah, you need to work. And that's what that whole bootstrap thing is. Because I understand, like, we don't want people to just be sitting around profiting off of other people's backs. That's really what the idea of that is, you know what I mean? And I can understand that, but I think that technology should have advanced to a point now where we shouldn't have to even be worrying about money, dog. All of us, if we had our minds open of shit that wasn't a daily struggle, man, you might find a cure for cancer one day, motherfucker. Just yeah. stumbling through the woods, you know what I or mean? Or just like, get to do what you want, you know what I mean? Right, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, seeing, because, like, that's the thing. Like, we don't even have time for that. When the last time you just went on a walk? You know what I'm saying? And just like for no reason, not working out, just to be like, man, I'm just going to go outside and just see where my feet take me, dog. You can't even do that as a black person because you might get a fucking shot. You know what I'm saying? Because they'll be like, why are you, in, why are you in the park, motherfucker? And then call the cops on you and shit. So that's a whole other thing. But, you know, even white people can't do that shit because you're working every fucking day. You know what I mean? And it's just like to that point where it's like, God damn, like, where did free thought go? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's really when the world was good was when we were in situations where like, they talk about the Greeks and like Egyptians and shit. Like they had built their societies up to a level where they didn't have to keep worrying about how to get food. You know what I'm saying? Where like people were bringing them steaks versus them hunting animals. So now they could think about, damn, how do you, you know, build an engine and make wheels and you know, all these different types of things, you know what I'm saying? And like, we never, we're, our society hasn't really got to that point. I think we were in it for a little bit in the nineties and that's why technology and computers took off. But somehow now we've created like this dystopian, like, classist fucking apocalyptic world that we're building where it's got to be like you're either on the side of the resistance or the fucking you know the dark side you know what i mean like we're in star wars type shit bro like it's crazy I mean, man i want to be positive too like i don't want to think something negative is going to come out of all this or something negative needs to happen for a positive to come out of it but in reality in history um there name one thing that's come out of peace i mean we've said this before like there's no positive change that's come out of just being peaceful and peaceful protests it always either turns violent or you use violence to get what you want and i don't want that to happen i'm not equipped to deal with it or exist in a society where that's what's going on but you know what's even crazier violence is the response to peace i mean look at fucking gandhi look at malcolm look at malcolm x martin luther king like uh, the Black Panthers even they didn't shoot nobody you know what I'm saying like all those people were peacefully organizing under the laws as they exist and they were met back with violence even the protesters now in 2020 same shit basically if you were me or if you just want to simplify it to like an equation the government don't want to hear what the fuck you gotta say so shut the fuck up or we go beat your ass yep I mean it's that's, that's kind of that. what they're showing and they you got I mean? they got people on all levels that can do that like, yeah if you're out on the street, we got cops that'll whip your ass, and then they're gonna put you in jail, and we're gonna have somebody whip your ass there because you won't shut the fuck up. And right. they can disappear some. Like that's the other thing where like a lot of this shit with the protests and shit, it is scary because even like that one the uh, the podcast we did where I we were talking about this more, and it was more centric on that. I used some p photos of protesters, but none of them really that showed their face. But there's all these stories where they're using like facial recognition to, you know, track those people down and shit. And it's like all these things that were conspiracy theories and just these fictional or vague possibilities, even a few years ago that we would talk about and even kind of laugh off like, oh, you know, like we're never going to see that shit. Uh, right. It's all happening. And that's they're it using exists. it to really kind of now because you said. There's all this information and connectivity to other people so you can get all these other opinions and sort of get a bigger knowledge of shit. They're starting to really crank down on those to the point where, I mean, 
you know, who knows? I mean, Five it's years funny from now, we, we might uh, be living in 1984, bro. Well, I'm saying, well, we already live in 1984, but uh, I mean, like, if you think about Minority Report, how crazy it was an idea to think you could go to jail because you were thinking of <clears> doing a crime. Yeah, I thought Like, crime. they're literally trying to police our thoughts right now. You see what I'm saying? Because, like, if you go and protest, that's your thought of saying, what's going on is wrong, I want to rebel against it. And they're beating your ass in the streets to say that thought is not the thought. But even though what you're representing is really the truth, you know what I'm saying? But that's what I'm saying. The government is sending a message to you, we don't give a fuck about the truth. Shut your ass up and get in line or else we're going to kill your ass. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, bro, that whole shit that I was showing you with that feral shit and that Anthony Weiner shit, I know it has to be truth in that because that story was pushed under the rug so quick. Same thing with like these hangings going on. Like all these black people just decided to start hanging themselves now all of a sudden, committing suicide. Yeah. When that ever been the case? You know what I'm saying? Like, but yet, if you look at all the reports, it's just kind of, you know, push that shit on the back burner. These you people know, were just... anxiety riddled individuals. Yeah. All concurrently decided to kill themselves in a racially. Uh... Right you know, visually racial way that people would get. Right. You know, I don't, it's, it I'm telling you, man, here. it's, you don't like, hear about that old. shit at all. I live in California and some of that shit happened pretty close to where I live. And it's like, nobody, you know, they killed the guy's shit. brother. The guy that got found in Antelope Valley out there, his brother went, was going to find, like see the body and the cops killed him. Jeez. Cause he was going to find his brother. That was him. Yeah. Shit's crazy, bro. That's what I'm saying, dog. That's why I feel like that whole uprising shit is an inevitability, bro. It's just that the problem with it is we won't win. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to just tell you straight up right now, like, you can't fight a war without resources. At any point, they can shut the water off and we lose. You know what I'm saying? They can cut all the food in this country and we lose. You don't think some rich people would actually help out, though, and, like, try to recognize and get on that side? No. No? Why would you want to help destroy the system that got you where you are? Regardless of who you are, you could be the you could be Jay Z and come from the same circumstance. You're not going to risk your billion dollar fortune that you acquired all this time to now help a whole bunch of people that you don't even know. That's just how the rich think, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like it's Machiavellian shit, where it's literally do as thou wilt. Well, what about like, somebody that's you know? like rich? Uh, let's take a black celebrity that has like opinionated. Uh, let's take Charlemagne the God. That guy's I, rich, right? He's rich. I mean, I don't think he's rich enough to, like, help us fight a war. I don't think he got war bonds money like but that. You don't think could, somebody you know. like that where there's people in that tier of... of I mean, the problem with him is he's on the radio. You know what I mean? Like, he says what they say, too. You know what I mean? Like, he gets ad dollars, too. So, at a certain point, yeah. he's going to answer to Clorox and, you know, fucking uh, McDonald's because he wants that money. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like... The problem that we're having right now is the ways of old versus this new train of thought of people understanding that the ways of old were always fucked up. It's kind of like, it's a hard thing to realize. Like, it's like when people come out of a cult where you like wake up and it's like, oh shit, like yeah. a guy sleeping with 14 year old, 17, 14 year old kids isn't normal. He's not God. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like now that you have to figure all these things out, look at those people that get out of cults. They're kind of like lost for a minute. And then they usually dedicate themselves to something else that's very cult-like too because that's all they know you know what i'm saying and then kind of fall into the same shit again where it's like whatever it is you know what i mean it could be veganism fitness whatever but like you're not in the cult no more so now i'm an ultra vegan and i you know i don't uh, turn the lights on in my house or some shit like that but what it really is is that you just have been a, you realize that everything that you learn right exactly and i mean it's something called cognitive dissonance where Anytime you hear a thought outside of your own that you've never heard before, your first instinct is to deny it because it goes, it's just like a self-defense mechanism. You know what I'm saying? Like if somebody gives you earth shattering information, like, guess what, bro? Uh, really grass is blue. You know what I'm saying? Like all the time we've been thinking it's green and shit. So now every time you look at grass, you got to be like, oh shit, man, I've been fucking wrong all this goddamn time. Yeah, it shakes right. everything that you understand. So like you want to fight it because it's better to go to the ways of old because it was safe. You know what I mean? That's what everybody's trying to do right now is seek safety, but you, nothing's gained in safety. That's the problem. Like, if you're a fucking polar bear, you have to go across the thin ice to get the seal, or and you might die, but if you don't, you're going to die anyway, so you don't eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's every animal takes that risk, and that's what humans do. And we create a society where you don't have to do that. You know what I mean? Where we can literally sit back and be force-fed information, and everything you could ever dream about, you can get order right to your doorstep. You know what I mean? Even now. But you got to realize, in that, you're giving away your freedoms too. You know what I mean? Your ability to go out there and take a shot at something and say, it might miss, you know what I'm saying? But if it works, then it could be great too. You know what I mean? And like, 
I think that's kind of what's going on too, bro. Like a lot of people are just now realizing they got to, you know, their life is really added up to nothing. And they see this moment as a time to really like do something with it, which is good. You know what I mean? But at the same time, like you might be stepping up to get killed though. You know what I mean? Like, cause I told you like those people that fought the revolutionary war did not fight it for their own freedoms. They were doing it so they could make a country later on where they, their family could be free. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it scared me too. Jesus. Or like, you know, or like even like the civil rights people, you know what I'm saying? Like they knew they were going to get bit by dogs and possibly killed so that their kids could be free in the next, you know, in the next life type shit. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, and that's kind of what I think we're getting to, man. Well, I don't think there's a lot of the people that are into doing that though. Cause I think there's a lot of weak ass willed people out there yeah. that don't have any sort of mental fortitude to even consider something like that, like a self-sacrifice. Oh yeah. That's why we would lose the war. If we, if we do rise up against the government, we're going to lose. Because number one, we're not united. There's there's the white yeah. supremacists, the black, and all that. And then, like I said, number two, we have no resources. And then, like I said, number three, no resolve. Nobody is going to sit there and fight a war they know they're going to get shot in, dude. And also, for me, realize, like, they've set themselves up to win also, them being the people who we would potentially have to fight against. But uh, with right. the COVID shit, where, like, like, dude, I don't even want to be with organized. people that I'm not around. Yeah. But, you know, right. Like, a random person that I don't know that I have to be around in like some kind of meeting or something. It's like, now that doesn't even seem possible. It seems dangerous. Right. I mean, basically it's all these things kept uh, established to keep us divided, bro. And through that division, they, it's like a snake weaving through the grass, just, you know, coming up and eating everything in sight because we can't see it, the whole body of the snake. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody can see a piece of it where it's like, Hey man, that's racism over there. That's fucked up. I mean, that's fucking people lies. But then, like, hey man, that's classism. That's fucking that's fucking people lies. But ain't nobody putting the whole thing together to be like, damn dog. Like we just all fucking lost. That's what it is. We all need each other help. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I don't think people <clears throat> down for that. And like I said, and even still, we aren't structured enough to even do that or enough resolve to do that, bro. Because like we could win a war. Like technically, like this is the last thing I'm gonna say. And this is all hypothetical because I don't want people to think I'm telling the people to kill anybody, but. If you wanted to win a war against the government, you would have to have organized militias in multiple cities throughout the United States making calculated destructive attacks throughout the gov- like throughout the area. So like, for example, you know, Minnesota, you have a whole bunch of people paramilitarized that would go and raid all of the food stores. You know what I'm saying? So that way they have resources and shit. Then like that's plan one attack. Then number two, you probably want to try to shut down the power system. You know what I'm saying? So that way you can close communications with the government and shit. Then, you know what I'm saying? Like you have like, in another city, you do the same thing. In another city, you do the same thing. So that way, like, it's all so spread out that like, you can't just fight on one battlefront. You know what I'm saying? But who's going to do that? Can you even do that? Because, like, they're monitoring your phones. They're yeah, monitoring your social they media. They can shut so, like, all that off. Even... Right, that's that's starts, how do you they're going to just shut all that down. The internet will exactly. be gone. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But, like, it would literally get to a point where it would have to be where, like, uh, some like uh, Hunger Games shit where it's like zone one, zone two, where they have to wall off the country because there keeps being miniature uprisings. But you have to have the mini uprisings all unite to be one big uprising. But like I said, I don't think we are, that shit is so complicated and deep. There aren't even enough people smart enough to even think about that shit to even make this shit a reality. So that's all I, yeah, that's all I say on it, you know? Well, I mean, I don't, to end that discussion or to end this episode, I guess, I don't want the yeah. bad shit to happen, but I think we're probably on, it seems like we're on a collision course for something bad to happen. So uh, I'm going to get an RV. I'm going <laughs> to get a VCR that has a tape of BET Uncut videos. And I'm going <laughs> to listen all, I'm just going to have, that's going to be my life after all this shit collapses. I'm just going to live out the rest of my days just proud. <laughs> <laughs> just, just imagine like, Matt in a Mad Max <laughs> Matt is in Mad Max situation riding in an RV listening to what oh, that God. smell like across the <laughs> just desert playing it. <laughs> playing it We're having TVs with it on like that's going to be the new oasis in the desert out in the oh, west man. I got the west coast we'll just do that's that that's amazing <laughs> I mean, it is kind of scary to think how many uh, movies do have apocalyptic scenarios in it, though, that we've seen in our lifetime, man. And we want to talk about predictive programming. Bro, got us ready. I'm about to say. That's why I'm out here jogging so much. I just got to get that cardio. You better stay in shape. Hell yeah, you better stay in shape. Them zombies get chasing after your ass. I'm about to (laughs) tell you, that's one thing. I see a lot of people going crazy eating and shit during all the lockdowns. It's like, 
You need to be mm-hmm. in here doing jailhouse workouts. Just getting ready. It's like uh, you get your summer body in the wintertime, baby. You better get it right. You know That's what I'm saying? That's what I'm doing right now. I, like, I'm trying. I'm doing my best. But, uh, yeah, sure. you better be Hell getting yeah. that cardio going at least so you can start running. Hell, yeah. I mean, I'm with you, though, man. Same thing. Like, uh, I hope, I'm hoping for the best, too, but – I ain't blind, motherfucker. I see the writing on the wall at the same yep. time. So that's all we I'm saying. We just need to, like, it. figure out a place to go. We both get RVs. We get our peoples, like, together. And we get a little compound going where we just, you know, we got our own little I'm all about that. Shit. I mean, that's really what I'm trying to do in VA on some real shit, bro. The next place I buy, like, from my house, I'm trying to get a little bit of land so I can grow food on that shit. So I can have at least that resource. I'm trying to sell some of that food. And I'm trying to get, like, water purifications and shit, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, if nothing else, there may come a time where it ain't food on the shelves, dog. You know what I'm saying? And, like, you start selling that shit and come up, you know what I mean? Like, that's the other thing about the free market, bro. People make mad money in tragedy, bro. You know what I'm saying? So if I can get a bulletproof vest business going or some shit like that, I don't <laughs> right. know. But I'm just saying, like, whatever it is, like, hey, man, look, I'm trying to – you need it, I got it. You know what I mean? Fuck Dude, it, I'm man. about to that's just how, get – Cause I'll tell you one, here's the thing that a lot of people are agreeing on. I know a lot of people don't agree on it, but especially where I live, how many people hate Trump, right? How many people you walk down the street, ask them, I hate Trump. It's going to be like 75%, maybe even more in LA. Who knows? There is a picture that my boy drew of Trump that just says fuck boy under it. it that's all it is. It's his face. And it says fuck boy. If we make these fucking shirts and we get them out right now and start selling them online for this month Let's leading do up to the shit, we got to figure it out because at least in these months leading up to the election, Hell especially yeah. right now, off the shelves, dude, we Bro, would make check this millions. Out. This was always my evil genius white supremacy get back at plan, right? Somehow get my own business where I start making hella authentic bomb looking racist confederate flag shit where it's like a shirt and it has the flag and it says something like don't tread on me you know what i you mean you won't be like, able to get anybody to print that shit. i might not be like, able to get anybody to print the one i want to but see but see i'm a black guy so that's why i was talking I was like, it's not racist because i'm making it, you know what i'm saying but then i would yeah, sell them yeah. two racist people and just make the money and like send my kids to college like that was my ultimate american dream where it's like your racism made me rich, dog. You know what I'm saying? That like, would be funny to make get that. that. It would be so great. But now they're banning the flag, so you know I think that dream's kind of gone now. But I'm down. Oh, no, it's even Trump more face. now. It's even more. Oh, you right now. The they're resistance. gonna want it. Hell you can't yeah. have it. You, you want it more then. Bro, draw me some. Draw me some. Uh, some very patriotic Confederate flag shirts, up, man. I'm gonna go get them printed, dog. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm talking like right just have now. Like, we're going to have to make a three-person deal with Jordan at least because he made the shit, so we got to cut him in. But if we I'm put – I'm it, telling bro. you right now, look up places to print and distribute T-shirts. Oh, they got gotta, those shirts. Oh, they got, yeah, they they got that definitely place. do. Yeah, they they so got sites like that. Yeah, we got to figure sure. that out for sure because, Hell I mean, yeah. that might be I'm one a, of those like research. moment in time money grabs where it's like, yeah, you know, it was a T-shirt, but we made 500K off of a shirt and some right. Because it was just the right place, right time type thing. Right. Then after that, man, we opened the biggest titty bar in the world. We hosted Black Jesus, man. It came, shut it down and shit, man. Like, and that's the whole story of the spearmint uh, jelly bean. Yeah. <laughs> What's the name of our fucking strip clubs? I know. We just combine all strip yeah. club names into one. <laughs> Do you remember Chicks on Dicks? Yeah. <laughs> it's the UN of pussy. Oh, man. Hilarious. Well, all right, man. I think we didn't, you know, hit our time limit again here once again, people. Baby, tell me what that thing smell like. What it smell like, what it tastes like, what it feel like, what it look like, what it sound like, when I cut it right, when I touch it right, when I kiss it right, when I lick it right.